again. But that happens, unfortunately, in an RNG heavy game sometimes. These things happen. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. GG. All right, Plexa, good luck. You have a nice lead. Try not to lose all of it. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> hey, look, I, I want to shout out Conical real quick. Uh, we He has improved so much in the last month. I'm so proud of you, man. Like, oh, from like that, that just above 3.3x tier to like consistently sub 3.30s, like pushing for world records. It's, it's insane the amount of improvement that's happened over the last month. Really proud of you, man. Well done. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, same. Like, I don't even get a 2x, so they're impressive. <laughs> and I run this game over here now. I'm pretty sure that's like the last judgment for Bluzer here. After this he will go for the Tourius, if I'm not wrong. So it looks like a good fight so far. Uh, got another auto space here. Oh, out of place. Could be sketchy on Ivan. Alright, it was targeted on Isaac, so no problem there. Still going for the Thorius, but it should be fine. We have Flash up and Ramsey skills next turn. Like, Flash should keep us safe here. And then we can just finish out the fight. So there's the Boreas. It's a lot of damage because he's weak to uh, Mercury. Yeah. I'm just a casual 972 damage. Yeah, heck <laughs> in the last second, evil blessing. Doesn't matter now. We just need um, Ramses and Fusion Dragon goes down. Go using ground. Oh, he's going for Cyber. Oh, maybe it's the red car. Oh, wait, he's actually using Judgment. No, man. I mean, it's fine. Better safe than sorry, right? <laughs> yeah, last thing you want to do is get to the last turn of Fusion Dragon and miscount that. Exactly. So there we go. Fusion Dragon goes down yeah. for Bluzer. GG's. GG's. What's that? 330 time. I mean, that's still not a terrible time, to yeah. be honest. I mean, I mean, it was a solid run. It was just Saturos yeah. that trolled him. Yeah, other than other Saturos, than that, that's, that's a yeah. pretty good run. All right, you lost minutes on Saturos. Yeah, it was like five or six minutes lost right there because of two resets. Yeah. Just unfortunate. But other than that, really, really a uh, solid run as well. And Bowie can make that up, I believe. <laughs> and Bowie will get a 2x now. Especially oh, yeah. just, especially because Plexa just went into uh, sleep mode. Oh, did he really? <laughs> yeah, he did. Wait, I didn't even see that. <laughs> Guys, come on. <laughs> Look, I know I'm supposed to be the, the professional, non-biased commentator here, but I'm definitely Team Bowie, I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> Sid knows what's up. <laughs> well, given how fast Bowie has been in his last few runs in the last sort of two weeks in TLA, he has every chance of making he up has that this momentum. deficit and then some. Oh yeah. That said, Plexa is an absolute powerhouse, so he is not the Grandmaster of Speed for nothing, you know? That's true. Yeah, but even Plexa is only a slave to RNG, so... <laughs> <laughs> I might as well just stay on now. I mean, yeah. There's not much happening in your run anymore. <laughs> so I lost eight and a half minutes to Sotaros, and then four minutes after that, so... Eh. I mean, it was pretty much only the Sotaros, right? Yeah, it happens. It happens. GG powering through all the bad luck. But yeah, there are still two games to go, and we have Poseidon coming up, we have um, Chaos Chimera coming up. Like, there are a lot of boss fights that can just go wrong, and oh, this yeah. really is far from over. Like, <laughs> it's 
There's TLA so much and Dark Dawn to have like so many run colors in yeah. them still. I mean, the first game is basically I'm just a prologue for the reruns, right? So. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's nice to have the prologue of TLA happening, like uh, while on the other screen we see what's happening in the. <laughs> In the, in the yeah, hour. it doesn't True. quite match up, but it's it's close. <laughs> yeah, it's close enough, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah just to uh, go into what what's happening on uh, Lexa's end for a little bit. Um, before he actually started his run, there were some parts that you obviously did not get to see, uh, and there are some important things that happened there. Uh, for one, he uh, cleared the names of Isaac and then uh, and, and Felix a couple of times. Uh, this is in order to manipulate uh, which Jin he will get during the reunion, like way, way further into the run. And um, aside from that, he also gave uh, Felix a very particular name. Uh, of course, right now we're playing as Jenna, which uh, you get to do for the first part of the game alongside uh, Jenna's theme. But as soon as we get to see Felix, then or if you see his name pop up in text boxes, you will see that his name is a lowercase y and then four tildes. So uh, you tildes, as they lovingly call him, and that that is in order to manipulate a couple of puzzles throughout uh, the game to make them consistent, to make sure that uh, every that we get exactly the puzzles that we want, fastest ones and consistently ones, and I'll point them out throughout the time. Yeah, it's really nice, and I mean, I still miss Constipated Face, like that was a good meme, but I, unfortunately slower. <laughs> it is unfortunately slower, though I will rep Constipated Don't Face Don't worry guys, I'm going to introduce you to Octopus Arms. To what? To what? <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate. But, like, the only In other time. one I know is... In time. Oh no. Uh, Plex oh, no, apparently he's has some now. secret threats, alright. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder just what, which category this is going to be for. Flex is actually doing a specific uh, uh, fight here. He's going to—he's he, using. You could just use fume to clear that, but if you use an attack and then a flare, you get two attacks first. Yeah. On your upcoming fights. Mm -hmm. That's very useful. <laughs> I'm—I'm I'm not going to be able to talk through a lot of this run, but what I will say is that Bowie has been in absolutely ridiculous form and i have been a lazy student i crammed everything yesterday rerouted half the game because if i'm going to beat him today it's going to be through routing and not execution so um, you still have to run commentators good luck well, so. <laughs> oh, thanks plexa i'll try to see if i can figure out what you're doing as you're doing it <laughs> yeah. i mean i have only seen a bit <laughs> because of plexa streams uh, there's a lot going on now <laughs> oh boy like, I'm not sure if it will actually save time, because Plex has not practiced, right, so... <laughs> like, maybe we we'll, yeah, like, just do mistakes now because of that. <laughs> but who knows? I, I, I mean, I'm still Team Felix, so... I think I'm, let's just hope Boy will clutch it. Um, Blues is finishing up the run here. Bow is probably already... <laughs> ready for this like oh my god i'm already six minutes behind <laughs> but yeah and it's fine there are still a lot of bosses to go and a lot of things that can go wrong all right GG Blue. 339.03. Oh, three. Well, it's not that bad, I would say. <laughs> I mean, I'm considering the unfortunate Saturus. Yeah.
All right, now we're getting Bowie into DLA as well. There we go, Bowie started up. All right, and I think I will hand it over to Blue and Sid now. That was it for me. Sounds TBS, good. I hope I gave some good insight. Thanks for your future. Yeah, um, have fun commentating and good luck to all other runners now. Gonna be a hype, really, I'm sure of that. So Plexa, in the meantime, has uh, survived the tidal wave. Uh, not, nothing out of the ordinary there, don't worry about it. Um, actually made sure to say no to a very important text box there, where otherwise Felix would do some leg stretches and lose Plexa some seconds. And uh, now he's uh, getting his teammates, and I mean all of his teammates, and nothing else but the teammates. And we're definitely not getting Kraden, because who wants to deal with Kraden? Um, it is actually faster to just leave Graydon behind. He will give you less text boxes if he's angry with you, instead of if you just get him up. Shoutouts to Bully and Graydon being an actual strat for less text boxes. Mm -hmm. Another thing that uh, Lex has already done and that uh, Bowie will be doing after these particular intro cutscenes is that Lex has already set the deck speed to fast, and which was the part where he accidentally went into sleep mode as well. Um, so if you're wondering why Bowie's text right now is moving a lot slower, uh, that's because he hasn't actually had the opportunity to do that yet. But in the meantime, Lexa has been past the intro and now going into the very first time town of Dyla, which also has a little bit of a flooding problem nothing to do with the tidal wave for for, for sure and uh just kind of gonna get into here and get an extra herb for safety and uh here we have echo who is significantly better than flint for one big reason only he lets you skip the tutorial so that is another very important now, now hold on, hold on now. Echo's okay. actually a way better gin in general. In general, hmm. You get two hits, right? You do get two hits, but that also means the animation it, is slightly slower. Dude, it, Echo <laughs> is identical to Flint, aside from the tutorial. <laughs> he looks cooler. I like the animation more. Slower, though. But yeah, that's another t instance of a very important text box to say no to, and there's definitely a couple more. Uh, here's the attacks first the blue sir was talking about earlier, that he set up with the punch ant in the cave before all those cutscenes. There's the second one. And uh, this run actually starts off with uh, quite significant dungeon breaking already. Um, for starters, there's a little menu here where Plexa is just gonna set up a retreat warping, which of course makes a return from Golden Sun 1. And uh, if he does that little whirlwind from far enough away, then you skip another text box from Kraden. We always love skipping text boxes from Kraden. And uh, this dungeon is uh, already gonna be a retreat glitch central, honestly. This dungeon technically has a, a boss fight. I don't know if we'll get to see it, but. Why not? Just to refresh how the uh, retreat glitch works, you basically make the game think that you have retreated to the first room of the dungeon, uh, but since you cast it from a hotkey without enough PP, um, it failed. Even though you got to press yes on the you, if you want to retreat or not, that's how you kind of trick the game. And uh, as a result, any doors, uh, and in the case of Golden's on the last stage, also items, uh, so like chests and stuff, um, and even synergy stones that you interact with, will instead interact with stuff with the same number in the first room. And uh, sometimes that's stuff out of bounds, sometimes it's stuff that doesn't exist at all, and you're gonna be seeing quite a lot of that. Throughout this first dungeon, Plexa will be mostly just running away from stuff. Um, he could technically uh, 
use some synergy with Felix to drain his uh, synergy points, but honestly, uh, in gen in on average, it's a lot faster to just try and run away. Uh, stuff is still low enough level that you can run away from it quite fast, and then instead you drain your synergy points with uh, some good old move spam. Retreat glitch and uh, back up the door we came. Completely different spot now. The nice thing about retreat glitch is also that it doesn't just work on doors, it can basically work on any screen transition. So for this next one, we are going to get on top of the rope, uh, fall off it thanks to that wind stream. Nice encounter, Plexa. And uh, do the screen transition that way, and that way we skip the chest beaters to pause of the first dungeon. Do you see the octopus arms yet, Sid? I do. I do. They're beautiful. So Carrie's explaining it in chat, but basically, you only need Y and four tildes. They can be in any order in Felix's name, and it will work. This is a little bit more stylish. Yeah, that's fair. I like the octopus arms. I, I dig it. And yeah, it's really just the value of the uh, particular character that matters. So we have like an entire table of which character uh, boils down to which value. And uh, as long as you get to like a certain one, there are multiple names that can work and give uh, the correct set of puzzles. Uh, and in this case, uh, since it's the exact same characters, just in a different order, they add up to the same number. I do see a very good comment from Blastag in chat there. This is the only Lash Jewel that is available in this particular temple, so all of the other students of this temple are completely out of luck. Anyway, Plex is just gonna go back right into a Kandorian temple in order to uh, get a particular gin called Fog. He uh, kinda needs as many gin as he can get early on. So it's very much worth to go back and uh, get this particular gin. Probably worth mentioning too that you thought gin fleeing was bad in Golden Sun 1. Well, <laughs> it's even worse in this game. Oh yeah. There is some particularly rough ones as well with the runbacks you have to do. Uh, looking at you, Steel. Mud. But yeah, one of the goals in the early part of the game is to once again get up to uh, the tier 4 summons as fast as possible for every element. And uh, for um, Mercury, that's actually the first one we're going to get, because this game is absolutely overflowing with Mercury Gin at the start. It's actually quite nice, it forces you to be a little bit more creative with your, uh, with your classes on a casual playthrough. Or in more likely it'll annoy you because you just want to stay in normal classes if on your casual playthrough. <laughs> and honestly, that's... You get to see a, a much wider diversity of like dealing with encounters in TLA. Oh, for sure. As opposed to just spamming summons and being, being done with it. There's absolutely parts where spamming summons is still very yeah. useful. But <laughs> just the fact that we switch classes so much and switch between fleeing and fighting, it's, it's, it's very good. It's also quite nice that in TLA you get so significantly more usage out of Retreat Glitch. This really shows just what the glitch is capable of. After this we little... Are just kind of finishing up here? His yeah. intro? Well, getting yeah. there, he's still gonna survive a flood. Felix is alive, don't worry. 
And in case you're wondering, yes, they did very much just wash up on that beach after Felix jumped down from a giant lighthouse in order to save Shiva. They're totally fine though, don't worry. So the upcoming retreat glitch is gonna look a, a little bit weird, because he's going to go through a door and he's going to end up out of bounds somehow, and uh, that's just because the uh, that particular tile corresponds to the door with that number. Uh, out of bounds data is always kind of like that, where it corresponds to a different type of tile, uh, depending on the data that's being stored there. And oh, after that, the encounter. Oh yeah. Um. And then uh, since he's out of bounds, he can actually walk his way over to a different tile, uh, which also acts as a door, and to uh, go to a door that saves about 10 seconds. Otherwise, you have to run through it in bounds. Maybe you risk another encounter. Um, no extra encounter before breath here. That's fortunate. If you like out of bounds, there's a little bit in Golden Sun. There's a or Golden Sun one. There's a lot in Golden Sun two. Oh yeah. See how breath fares. Just a nice attack. Pretty good. And a lot of the strategies with these Jin are in order to just try and minimize the uh, amount of opportunities they get to uh, to run away. So make sure that it is as, as few turns as possible. Even if there are attack animations would otherwise be pretty fast and you have to do some slow animations, it's probably worth it to try and get a <laughs> get as get give them as little opportunity. So Bowie's yeah. officially finished up with his intro, Plexa just leaving uh Temple of the Seagull. Mm -hmm. And we're and we're gone. Finally. Yeah. Sorry, Bowie. <clears throat> <laughs> Hey man, the game does what the game does. <laughs> yeah. I... That's that's going to some speed running for you. Yeah. So here in uh, Deacon Plateau, we'll actually see the first instance of a uh, different kind of retreat glitch, where instead of using it on a door, we're also going to be Oh, which we're also going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be using it on a chest as well, in order to access a chest that's in the first one, uh, first room of the dungeon. Uh, in this particular application, it is actually an existing chest that uh, you would otherwise also be able to get to. But this way, it's just faster. We need to go here for the mint anyway. And there's a retreat glitch, and there is full metal vest from the exact same uh, chest right there. And we're actually going to oh, leave that now. retreat So glitch. we've just used retreat glitch to get an interesting item from something where you normally wouldn't be able to get an item from? Uh, yeah. Oh, we might. I wonder if we'll see that later. Nah, probably not. Probably not. It's, it seems like a very situational thing, you know. Mm. It needs to be an actual chest in that first room that has a useful item in it at all, you know. It's... it's Definitely not going to be more complicated than that at all. Oh, hello. <laughs> First instance of a Jin fleeing. Hello, Iron. <laughs> Fortunately, it's an overworld Jin, which uh, can be pretty quick to get another encounter again. Yeah, I expect to see some amount of Jin's fleeing, absolutely. Also, don't worry about the fact that we're on a beach near Madra all of a sudden. Uh, that's kind of like uh, a failsafe if you do a retreat glitch on a door where uh, it refers to a door that doesn't actually exist. It just sends you to the global zero zero door. Um, definitely not going to be using that whole bunch in order to warp all over the place.
And the funny part is, is that I, after he does that particular warp to get out of it, he is actually gonna go walk back into the Caputo and just enters from the other side. This is basically just to uh, skip a whole bunch of um, puzzles in the Caputo, since we can enter it from the backside in order to go get to the Jin there cannon. Uh, you see, Bowie Bowie just used Earthquake on that last encounter. You might be thinking, oh, why is Bowie not fleeing from things? Like, uh, you know, that seems like pretty fast. He's actually just trying to drain some PP. Uh, uh, so he doesn't have to do quite as many move casts. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Earthquake, so I was trats myself as well. But at this point, he's already uh, drained enough, so now he's just going to go right into fleeing again. I am just land right on top of Kevin's head. Now Bowie is also gonna go ahead and skip the chest beaters in Kadorian Temple. Textbook stuff. The other reason uh, that the Long warp that Plexa did to get to the Majorat Beach is particularly useful is that you can get iron before you get cannon over here and uh, that means that gives us access to the Ramsey summon since we now have two Venus Jin, Echo and Iron and that will allow us to uh, only give uh, oh, <laughs> <the flea. laughs> cannon one opportunity to run which he takes <laughs> oh my god this is a pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, we least. mentioned it's really bad. It's worse in this game when when Jin flee. This is one of the lesser terrible ones, but still not great. Yeah, because you do have to go back down and do mm. that pound again. Yeah. yeah now that he has access to Remzies, he can actually kill him on the second turn before. I can't actually get any chance to fight back up. By which I mean run away. Bowie going in for his second lap here. Lex uh, making his way out with street glitches, and don't worry about the fact that he was invisible. Normal stuff. And then with a retreat glitch on that particular screen transition, you can get all the way back to the exit. Now important also is that in Deacon Bruto, that warp to the exit that Plexa just did, you do not actually have access to um, until you enter it from the other side. It is always the first room of the dungeon, and the first room of the dungeon depends entirely from which entrance you take. That is something that will be coming back in the last stage a significant amount of time where we just change the, the door in which we enter the uh, dungeon with in order to get access to a new set of retreat glitches and uh, it's especially important in the rocks since the rocks uh, essentially acts as two dungeons in one where the inside and the outside are different dungeons and the inside tends to have two separate entrances Bowie just making his way out of Kandorian Temple, straight out of the back of that NPC's head. Normal stuff. And meanwhile, Plexa is talking to definitely not the Mercury adept of this game. He definitely will not be joining his party later. I wonder if this Mercury Mer Mercury, <laughs> Mercury Mercury adept is going to be equally as impressed by our uh, ability to use move. I think so. It's, it's oh, the NPC just did a frost clip. Let's go, dude! Wow, let's go! Great speedrunner there. <laughs> I wish I was at, as good at frost clipping as that NPC. Very bad at it. I mean, these guys are joking about frost clips and stuff, but TLA is way more technical than the first game. And part of the reason is there's like sub-pixel perfect tricks 
to clip onto things and whatnot. It's pretty insane. So oh, he's yeah. just setting up the stage for uh, us to do some cool stuff later on. Yeah, rather than just sticking to frost pillars, we're also going to be doing normal pillars. Right. Now, Blue, if you could stick it for a little bit, I do have to go fix something real quick. Yep, no worries. So Bowie's going back into... Or, well, he's this is his first time into Temple of the Sea God, but he's he setting up for the um, Out of Bounds now, too. You can't see what you're doing off screen, but there's like pretty easy ways to tell, well, not tell where you are, but as long as you're doing the same movement every time, you're you're pretty safe to get to the doors out of bounds that you want to be going to. So he gets it no problem. I'm gonna hope for no flea here. If you, this um, breath is one of the slightly worse gin to have flea because you, you have to reload the room, which usually adds an extra encounter, and that's not good. Plexa just grabbing the pirate sword. I think that's what it's called, Pirate Sword. Anyway, just uh, grabbing that before heading out of the Sydney Cliffs. Gonna sell that later. I'm gonna sell that pretty soon, actually. So let's see, how's Breath going here? Hope for an ability. Oh, okay, that was second turn. So GG, no fleas. Flex is gonna be taking encounters through here as well. We're going to be doing a little bit of shopping. Oh, wait, you're getting some good raid here. Entering the Dakon Plateau. So I'm about to do a pretty big shopping trip in Mikasala. Do you want to tell people a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, so, like I said, uh, the reason he's taking these encounters for that shopping trip that I mentioned, it's coming up right now. Also, the pirate sword. Uh, yep, just gonna sell those, get a little bit of armor for Sheba, and grab a uh, an axe for Felix, just to get him a little bit of uh, extra damage so he's uh, useful. <laughs> uh, oh, and herbs for Sheba. Just because... Um, you don't want to be. I actually just ordered roller herbs. I, I bought them back in Dyla just for safety strats. Oh, did you? I didn't available. Yeah, yeah. It's, but yeah, it's so, it's so he's got anyway, just because people, yeah. like PP management is is kind of a thing, and you don't want to just be spamming heals with Felix the whole time because he's going to be out of PP. So Bowie is in iron, and it looks like he should be getting out without a flea. Second turn. Okay, okay. It's just an attack. We're good to go. Oh, we saved a little bit of time over Plexa there. Oh, yeah. And there you have it. Plex has got all of his goodies, and he's heading out to Sour. A fan favorite gin. I don't seem to... I don't see the big problem with Sour, but everybody seems to hate Sour. I, eh. well, he can be a jerk sometimes, but I don't feel like he's a jerk more often than other gin. Yeah. Plexa electing to take the encounter. I, guess, I suppose it's quite a big encounter. It's probably not the safest thing to flee from. Yeah, trolls really go in in the early game. Mm -hmm. I just will mention, too, the, the reason that you saw both runners egg, uh, entering the cave before uh, um, 
heading up to enter Dakon from the back is just to reset the step count. Yeah, if we can, uh, spare, like, without losing too much time, hit a, a K for a different screen transition uh, in order to reset that step count onto zero, then we will usually take it. But if you t if you get an encounter, like, literally just before you're there, then it's just not worth it. Oh my gosh, Felix dying for Bowie. That is a big yikes. Yeah. He's gonna make his way back to Madra. Which... Yeah. At least if he dies, I was gonna say he's he's got two he's got one less party member. So if he if he dies, he's just gonna be sent back there anyway. No, he actually hasn't touched Madra yet, so he would be sent. Oh, with Dyla. yeah, that. Yeah, so hopefully he's he's not gonna. Hopefully he's gonna make it there just fine. Yeah. yeah. So, but we're gonna be doing stuff in a little bit of a different order there, and uh, unfortunate timing on that death. Yeah. You don't want to see anyone die anywhere, usually at least at this point, but like that's definitely not a great spot. Yeah. Like if it happens, at least let it happen like in the iron fight or something so you can write yeah, then you can just... make the decision to go to Madrafa. Yeah. Yeah. In the meantime, Plex is making his way to Eris Rock. Um, he is going to continue to uh, take encounters because he does want to make sure that he gets a high enough level uh, by the end of Briggs in order to be able to avoid his way through Yumpy Desert. That is one of the big reasons why it is beneficial to uh, do Eris Rock first. Not the biggest reason, we'll get to that, but a big reason. And as soon as he gets to this big stretch of desert, uh, there is no more encounters. He also opened his map there, and that is actually in order to uh, reset stored map data. Um, so that uh, retreat glitches later on will be more consistent. And from this point onward, he is going to be keeping track of which uh, monster is in the second slot of every encounter that he encounters. And, uh, because the, the last one, before he has to do some retreat glitching, that one matters. That can significantly alter what the data that's stored out of bounds looks like, uh, which means he, he will have to take some different strats on some out of bounds than he does. It's pretty much like we know two setups, setup A, B, depending on the enemy that we are we have in slot two, we'll just do either of the two uh, uh, movements for out of bounds stuff. Exactly. At his bottom floor of the outside section, Plexa just does pretty, pretty normally. In the save and quit category, there would be one small skip that we would be able to do to skip part of it, but I don't know, I'd no save and quit, which definitely would be a preferred category for most runners. Um, you uh, have to do pretty much all of it. With the help of retreat, though, it can be sped up quite a bit. And then after every retreat, he is going to be uh, going out of the dungeon and back into the dungeon in order to reset his encounter steps to hopefully make it to the next whirlwind stone without having to um, get another encounter. This particular stretch can be especially tricky, it's quite a long one. Good chance to get an encounter, but no. He got away with it, I think. There's still a small piece of stuff, a uh, piece of land after the retreat that he could get on a counter on. But we made his way back to Dekan. Attempt number two. Yeah. yeah, the enemies take quite a nice little big step up and well not too big, but they're they're definitely a lot tougher. Uh, once you get to the overworld here. For sure. Part of the problem of fleeing so much in early game is that, well, by the time you get to the tougher enemies, they're going to be uh, more of a threat. But we're going to be skirting that line for most of the run, really. If at any point it can be on average faster to run away from enemies, we will run away from enemies.
So Plex is taking these encounters here. He's taking note. You, you, you want to kind of watch uh, Sheba's PP through here because he's, as you can already tell, we're using Whirlwind a lot. And if she doesn't have enough PP to cast Whirlwind, well, you're running around in circles. <laughs> Ooh, and that, that accidental <laughs> Whirlwind to the right there, that... Okay. Yeah, hate, hate to see it. Yeah, it's one of the problems with doing this dungeon as early as you do. Shiba will have less PP just because she's lower level, and you will need a lot of uh, a lot of whirlwinding. And ideally, uh, once you get to the inside, you also want to not restore everybody's PP because you're going to be doing a bunch of retreat glitches. But it can be the safer choice to do that once you get there. Kind of depends just how the encounters lined up, how much uh, whirlwind that you had to do. But we making it through cannon, no problems. No fleas, hell yeah. Nope. It's a little bit of a band aid on the death. Unfortunately for Plexa, when you get an encounter that does despawn any whirlwind that was already on screen. So, uh, whereas he otherwise would have been able to get a faster cycle, the encounter despawned the whirlwinds, making him have to wait just a little bit longer. Normally, Bowie would be stopping to do all the peers, cutscene stuff here, but where he was here earlier, he's just gonna pop in, pop out. Just get that encounter step reset. Oh, and, and, and Alexa Ooh. with the 3 million IQ strength! <laughs> oh, yeah. Uses the move to move the pillar so that the tornado or the whirlwind doesn't uh, despawn when hitting the pillar. And his movement has to actually be pretty tight in order to make that. And it is impossible to make it without the move. You're, you really do need the move. From this point on, but we're also going to be fighting encounters to try and build up that money and get some experience. Oh, food's ready. Food is ready. <laughs> right here, Bowie taking a little dip into Sora, into the deserts, uh, in order to reset the encounter steps. Just make sure that he gets his encounter just a little bit later. He does want to get sufficient amount of encounters, but uh, it doesn't really matter that much. We got Plexa going for the uh, the off-screen move here. So you're we've we he's he's cast retreat uh, at the bottom of the stair or at the bottom of the ladder ladder whatever you want to call it. It's not exactly a ladder, but uh, anyway, d disabled the the loading zone at the top, and he's gonna make his way around the screen above him with well, essentially blind. He knows where he's going. There's a couple of little tricks you can use, like opening your menu. It won't work when you're on a ladder, so you can just kind of fiddle around with that to see where you're at if you get quote-unquote lost. But he knows what he's doing. He's going to use move on the, the pillar up there to get it into place. Um, oh, you get the encounter early, so he's... Okay, that's yeah, actually he's, he's back up there. He's back up yeah. there. Oh, he was already up? Yeah, he was walking back up. Okay, good. Left good. Right. So okay. he's got the encounter, which is going to re-enable the loading zone. He's going to walk back down the ladder, and boom, there. The screen's solved. You just walk up and cast Whirlwind. That was actually such an optimal timing on that encounter. Yeah, that was really... It looked I, like it was yeah, early. Yeah, I thought it was early. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, man. If you do get it early, you just have to cast Retreat again, but the downside is that you're going to have to run around up top for a little bit longer to get that encounter since you just got one, unless you have a really terrible raid. This is like the one time that you would want a terrible raid. Yeah. We have a very unique skip there, That's that warp from the top to the bottom is really only possible in this part of Air's Rock, just because of the uh, the mist that's kind of hanging around there, which uh, essentially just makes you loop 
around the stage. Whenever, whenever you try to climb up, it sends you back down, and you need to do the whirlwind in order to clear that. Are we doing his shop trip here? Getting the same stuff. A little uh, an armlet for Sheba, the axe for Felix, and some herbs. And Plexa opts in for the safety Trinity Stone for the inside. Very smart move, considering he had an extra whirlwind downstairs as well. Yeah, Plexa can pretty much just spam synergy at will now and not really have to worry about his PP. Like, Plasma's really good in here. The only downside is that he has to drain Felix's PP again uh, once he gets to more um, retreat clips. Yeah. Yeah. And, um. Uh, Looks like well, Sour's. Oh. Okay. I think we're good. Sour's gone well for Bowie. Yep. Away he goes. Away he goes. And Plexa is coming up on the next little piece of tech. So if you were here for Golden Sun 1, you saw the Frost Pillar clip. And here in Golden Sun, the last stage, we can do those kinds of clips on uh, normal kind of pillars as well. We just need to get into the right pixel or sub pixel position. Yeah, so I was just gonna say right. get a little troll by the sub pixel there. Yep. He was in the right pixel position, but he just kinda had to do it the tiniest tap on his control stick in order to also get the sub pixel alignment right. Which uh, you can actually use Felix's hair spike in order to tell whether you have the right one or not. <laughs> uh, and then uh, he can just manage to reach that pillar and slide it onto himself and clip on top. In that move clipping you're actually going to be seeing quite a lot at the start of TLA. And then not at all in the entire rest of the run. They are very much front loaded in the first couple of hours. Looks like getting a bit of a juicer this encounter here. Mm -hmm. And as he sets up for this next move clip on this particular one right here, uh, Plex is also going to be using move in order to uh, drain his energy points. And it's actually much faster to do that on a pillar because uh, as soon as it hits something, you can then immediately cancel it, which means you can cast it a lot faster rather than waiting for the entire animation to run out. Kind of keeping track of it. Uh, he only gets one chance at this particular move clip, and he unfortunately missed it, so he is going to have to run around. Yeah, that pillar, once it slides into place, it is staying there for good, even through screen transitions, so... Oh, he actually scared me there. I thought he was going to enter without clearing his map data, but he, he did it, like, right <laughs> before entering. I'm going to be honest, I always enter without clearing my map data. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually don't have much of a problem with it as long as I remember to do it before I go into Yumpy Desert. Now another little weird retreat glitch thing that Plexa did in a previous room was that while you are in retreat glitch mode, that uh, the game considers you in the first room, so it actually does not spawn the animation for the uh, the air vent, which means you can just walk right past it. Oh, nice, of course, you get an encounter which takes you out of retreat mode, which always happens for me in that particular air vent. Now right here, Plexa is re-entering the inner part of this dungeon from a different door in order to change which door is regarded as the uh, new the, the, the new uh, first room of the dungeon, which actually gives him access to a different amount of uh, glitches. Plexa, what are you doing? I have no idea what Plexa is <laughs> doing right now, but <laughs> very you... best. Is he going to... He's telling me he's trying to clip up. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> what, are you, what is he doing? 
He's going for death threats, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he did already say that he uh, did some rerouting in order to try and get the edge over Bowie, who has been on absolute fire lately. No, so. All of his rerouting was to no avail because I started the race with a my team 10 minutes behind. <laughs> Plex are wasting his time entirely. Oh, that is crazy. So rather than taking the whirlwind up, he retreats glitches his way up here, clips through the pillar, and there you go. Alright, I'd love to explain how that particular clip works, but I have never done it. I don't know the very particular things of it. <laughs> Apparently this is th what the task does, but I... Pff, yeah. Don't ask me, guys. It is technically faster if, if you get it perfectly. Yeah, it's faster if the encounter is really quick. Um, if I actually used Plasma on turn 1, it would have been faster. Um, I got a really good break to make it all align nicely. But then I also walked my move, which was a bit of a oopsie on my behalf. But yeah. It's slower on average. Thanks for the swag, Plexa. Plexa, did you just get what I think you got? Oh yeah, you sure got a cold blade. Sure thing. Why not? So, um... Don't worry, that is planned. Um, <laughs> the way uh, that the uh, getting items through Ripper Privilege works is that uh, whenever you try and get an item uh, that does not actually exist in the first room of the dungeon, so you get a number. Um, you will instead start looking at a list of items and try to get the correct item based on the item ID there. And in this particular case, that particular um, Synergy Stone's ID just happens to be the exact same as the Soul Blade in that list. So there you go, Soul Blade early. And he could repeat that over and over and over if you so choose. Uh, get your Megiddos ready, we're going to be seeing a lot of it, most of them are going to be slow, and when we need the most in boss fights, they're not gonna happen. But welcome to our main source of power for the first stretch of the run. Uh, at this point, for most two enemy encounters, he's just going to be taking two turns to just attack with Felix and one-hit them into oblivion. and pray that he doesn't get Megiddo, because at this point he is strong enough with just a regular attack to one-shot them. He does not need Megiddo. Yo! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> He's got the pillar move as well. Nice. Very good stuff. Now earlier in Aerosaurus we were talking about keeping track of the uh, second monster in uh, the, party, the encounters that we get and that uh, is actually, was actually uh, a little bit earlier where um, Plexa you also used the retreat glitch to just kind of clip onto a pillar and got out of bounds that particular way um, and uh, there was a little out of bounds there uh, where he had to, you know, know which type of data was stored in the out of bounds to know which movement he had to do. But he got it without a problem. He's way up to the uh, out of bounds now as well. Yep. See how it goes for him. The blind movement can be one of the scarier things to learn when you first pick up this game. But with really the... fun stuff, though. Really oh, fun yeah. stuff. <laughs> and with good notes, can be surprisingly consistent. It's only useful in two dungeons in the in the run, but they are very cool strats. There's Bowie's move. Now let's see, does he get an early? No, he's definitely made it to the ladder. He's good. Oh yeah. He is on there. Nice! Oh, he just needs to make sure that he actually goes down the right ladder because he had not moved left yet. We could end up like me, clipping outside of the ladder and ending up on the, uh... on a ledge up on the next screen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
Can't say I've done that one before. Yeah. <laughs> Not the worst thing you could do in Air's Rock, though. Well, when I ran the, the Any% percent category, which also has save warps in, in RPG Limit Break, I accidentally uh, was in the wrong spot when doing so and softlocked myself and had to Sanctum Warp all the way back to uh, the nearest town and do the Ouch. entire dungeon over. <laughs> I only went five minutes over rest of it, funnily enough. <laughs> uh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay. Oh, we making his way in. Go. And in the meantime, Plexa is making his way through Yumpy. And I take it. So Plexa, you might notice Plexa just took a save. This is in case he gets a double uh, emu uh, in the, the encounter out of bounds here. That if you get the double emu, that will mess up the out of bounds um, landscape, and he won't be able to do what he just did. So made it through just fine either way. Good stuff. Actually, grabbing a water of life there from Yumpy Desert Cave, which is a little bit of a detour, but very much worth because there is plenty of stuff that can kill you. Uh, ideally, he'll be saving that water of life all the way up until Poseidon, where we need it most. But um, if Briggs is feeling particularly uh, unkind, he can even need it in the Briggs fight already, which is coming up pretty shortly. But not until some wonderful cutscenes. In the meantime, Bowie is coming up on his first set of move clips. After Always doing the same through here, of course, to kind of taking note of what he's getting in uh, slot two. I, oh, I, it, it seems like Bowie didn't take the um, Synergy Stone at the start. Which like, which, which, like Sid mentioned, this is a value, uh, valid strat, because you're not going to have to worry about draining any PP, but it does leave you a little... Well, you can see Bowie's having to make um, some pretty tough decisions on how he's taking encounters uh, through here. Yeah. Getting the move clip, though, nice and easy. Good stuff. Let's see if we can make up some time on Plexa by getting the second move clip as well. He at the very least will already uh, not be having to drain his synergy points. So provided he does get the encounters properly, he will be able to make up some time that way. Wouldn't be surprised if that factored into why he decided to skip the Synergy Stone as well. Just try and play a little bit more risky, trying to make up some time. Uh, Bowie, Bowie just suffering there from a spherical um, collision. <laughs> the... Uh... You might think you're pushing a square object, but you're actually pushing a, a circle. He kind of just ran past the edge there. Pillars are impossible. Nice, got the move clip, and Easy. immediately in a counter. <laughs> Ooh. Alexa taking a save before Briggs, fair enough. Good call, yeah. for sure. If you dying to Briggs, uh, if you like watching cutscenes multiple times, <clears throat> me doing Saturos three times, <clears throat> then this uh, is one of those fights that if you if you do end up losing, you're gonna have to watch a cutscene every single time. So, so particularly weird. The worst thing is it, it misses with your money route. So, oh, yeah. um, just just don't don't want any troubles with that today. Bowie oh, actually having to do a particularly weird movement against the wall that is actually the only spot before the next door that you can get encounters, which is why he's running up against that wall. But yeah, let's go over the Briggs fight, because this can be particularly scary. And uh, Plex already set up his Jin in, in, in the right way to make sure that he has access to uh, Volcano in order to uh, here on the first turn. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, pumping up Felix with some impacts to get his attack uh, stat way high. And um, 
this Megiddo was actually good. Um, the Volcano on that we did uh, lined up on Jenna was actually to finish off that particular Sea Fighter, uh, just in case we did not get a Megiddo. But uh, Felix did get a Megiddo, so that's good. And um, we're kind of going to just be tricking Briggs into using all of his signal whistles right away by just focusing now these Sea Fighters first. It's A, safe, because these Sea Fighters do not actually uh, and get to attack you, which they have echo cuts. It's a very, very hard hitting move. They can very much kill people in this fight if you let them. Which is they also have oil first. drops. Oh yeah. And um, on the other, on the other side, it's also good experience to just kill all of the sea fighters, which you know makes it all the more likely that after this fight will be a good experience level in order to avoid all the way through the desert. And Plexa got very good Megiddo's there because at that point after you get all the sea fighters down you want to get bricks down as soon as possible which of course depends on whether you get the Megiddo procs or not but that was a pretty textbook fight. If you're wondering what, why Plexa was bothering casting Ward it's just it, uh, it's just like a uh, it's a safe thing to do against the oil drops that I was talking about. Oh yeah. You yeah, do not thing. want Felix to die in this fight. Oh, absolutely not. And the, the thing is with Briggs as well, he will prioritize all of his items before he will prioritize just normal attacks and, and stuff like that. So um, after he has used all of those signal whistles, you can be sure that the oil drop is coming pretty soon. And now Plexa is rewarded with four minutes of cutscenes. And Bowie is rewarded with a Soul Blade. Hell yeah! Equips that right away. I don't know if we mentioned when Plexa was in here, but after you get the Soul Blade, you can pretty much... Actually, no, Sid, I think you mentioned it, but yeah, just, just to recap, you can... if As long as you get an encounter with, like, two uh, two enemies, three, you kind of have to do some wonky stuff, but if you get an, enemy, uh, an encounter with two, you can just take everything out with Felix, single attack. Mm-hmm, exactly. Synergy animations at that point are just a waste of time compared to doing normal hits. Of course, you also risk a chance on Megiddo, but we take those. Alright, so well, we line up for the Out of Bounds here, took note of the encounter that he just had to know which movement he has to do in order to get to the Luckily, he room. got the... Oh! Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess he was on Ghoul? Yeah, Bo, uh, Harpy doesn't overwrite Ghoul. I found this out, like, a few days what? ago. It's not pleasant. Harpy doesn't huh. overwrite? Yeah. Interesting. It doesn't overwrite it. It overwrites wow. some stuff, but not Ghoul. So, you have to do- oh, if you had Ghoul previously, you have to do the Ghoul well, setup. Then. If, if you remember that day where I just, like, did, like, an hour stream of TLA, and then was like, well, I'm not gonna continue this, just because that happened. And we sciced it, and then I figured out that Harpy doesn't override, which is really, really annoying. That is weird behavior, yeah, folks. Knowledge is power. For sure. No, to, to be that fair, was a really I, nice recovery, <laughs> by the way. Oh yeah. To be fair, that was like, you know, kind of, a, it's, it's a, a, a pretty freak thing. Megiddo! Yeah, you can take your pick uh, whether you uh, whether you're on Team McGee Don't or Team McGee No. I personally I prefer McGee No. But, I like the uh, sound of that better. Yeah. <laughs> any t pretty much any encounter that you see a Megiddo come out on, you're sad about. It loses what like three ish seconds. Like and a, a normal attack will kill anything. A Megiddo, of course, will also kill. It's just so slow. Oh yeah. Another small thing of notes is that uh, Bowie just picked up the vial from that particular chest. Plex also did this. Uh, this is purely for money reasons. We're going to be gathering a bunch of vials from several places and selling them just so that we uh, have access to another uh, shop menu and get everything we want uh, when we get to um, Izumo. You can spread the shop menu that we're talking about up a little bit, but of course it's better to do it just in the one go.
They're still talking, man. They're still talking. <laughs> yeah, well, Creighton's in the cutscene, so. Oh, that's true. <laughs> and the mayors, who. <laughs> All these old men just doing talking. Oh, there we go. Plex is on his way again. Now we do still have to do Yumpy Desert because King Scorpion in there um, does actually give the Scoop Gem, which is essential. Um, there's also some other useful stuff here in uh, Yumpy Desert that we can get. One of them is a uh, Jin called Blitz, uh, Blitz which what, what? I think might get the name wrong. I always forget which Jin this is. I can't, I can't help you here. <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, it's Blitz. Uh, it splits? Okay, cool. And uh, right now he's getting the Trainer's Whip, which will not come into play until Doom Dragon. <laughs> oh, we making his way out of Air's Rock now? He's done it. Just so that's... casting some moves to uh, prepare for the um, uh, the retreat glitches he's going to be doing coming up real oh, yeah. soon. Nice thing, by the way, that door that uh, Bowie walked out of and that allowed us to get the, the soul blade and stuff. It is called the Bowie door, not oh, because yes, he found right. that it, not because he found that it existed. No, because he reminded everybody that it existed <laughs> when he was doing his uh, Camel Up Mount playthrough. Thank you, Bowie. Beautiful accident. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's why speedrunners should watch casual streams, because you'll notice obscurities where the casual person will not. And casual people will do things that you have you will never do. You'll they'll go into a room which has no bearing on speedrun at all. And oh, lo and behold, there'll be something amazing there. In this case it was Soul Blade, so yeah, <laughs> do your homework peeps. For sure. So another useful thing that uh, Plex is picking up here in Yumpy Desert is the Guardian Ring. And, oh, um, oh, you scared me. Sorry. <laughs> Everything's fine. He's a professional, he knows what he's doing. Uh, but yeah, the Guardian Ring uh, gives a little bit of extra defense, but mo more importantly, it also gives HP. And we are putting that on Shiba because Shiba is made of paper. She will just straight up die if you let her. So anything we can do to make that girl a bit more tanky, we take. But yeah, Plexa getting getting blitz over here, and this this fight is just so gratifying. Um, back in any percent, we used to do this. Uh, we used to do Yumpy Desert before Air's Rock, and this guy would always ruin your day. If he if he runs away, that is such a gigantic time waste. But now we can just cast Echo on him, and he's gone. With the power of this whole good. I knew it. Oh yeah. Uh, mostly due to the power of the Soul Blade, really. But... but Echo's a good boy. Alright, and now Plex is just going to go through a couple of uh, puzzles here in order to uh, get to King Scorpion. Uh, something else he did in Yumpy Desert is that he actually went all the way to the other side of Yumpy Desert and then went back in, and that is to set the uh, first room of the dungeon uh, on that particular side, which will make that his retreat point, which will be important coming up. Also make sure to recast the void one more time, just so that he also has a void for the stretch of land that's coming up after King Scorpion. I'm gonna give you a heads up here, Sid. I am going to be getting a little something to eat after Bowie is through with Briggs. Sounds good. Now the way the King Scorpion fight is going to go is we're going to once again boost um, Felix up with some impacts to get his attack up, and then we're gonna pray for Megiddo's. 
and then we're just gonna attack King Scorpion. And he is significantly weaker than Briggs, so this fight should be significantly shorter. And there's the Megiddo. And uh, should be pretty close to death at this point. You also want to make sure that he does uh, area of effect damage to use, just so that you can heal everybody and set up for a retreat glitch by draining with Felix. And there you go. Very fast King Scorpion. I was worried that I would have to explain King Scorpion while Bowie was in Briggs, but nope. Very fast fight. Thanks, Megiddo. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Megiddo. But in the meantime, Bowie is coming up for his fight with Briggs. Uh, just real quick, Plexa is going to be doing a retreat glitch in order to get back to the beach on Madra. Once again, using the Madra door, the safety door. Um, since there isn't actually a door with a number that he's about to walk through. So, very convenient. Very convenient. And here we go, Briggs. Once again, boosting with impacts using Volcano uh, to finish off the Sea Fighter in case it's necessary. But we also get some Nido. <laughs> no that... volcanoes needed. No volcanoes today. I think that prison was an accident. I, I, I'm not sure what that. It, it ended up working, but. It ended up working, but. Yeah. But yeah, no problem. He, no he did target the yeah. sea fighter, though. I mean, yeah, well, he's getting oh, some more right. Megiddo's here. <laughs> exactly. And now, yeah, this is the part where really, Briggs really but... wants Megiddo. You know, uh, Briggs uses herb, that means oil drop is in, in play. <laughs> so, I uh, don't know if he, he's warded or not. I don't, know if, I don't know if Bowie goes for the ward or not. I don't think he does. No, there's the there's oil, oil drop. Oh, he is not getting Megiddo's. Uh, using a breath just to be safe, make sure Felix doesn't die. Then not. Yeah, that's good though. That's there good. we go. That, sh that should be enough. There he is. <laughs> Alright, a little bit slower of a brick slide, but that's just the Megiddo luck striking. And uh, no deaths, so that's all we, that's all we want. Alright, I'm gonna pop up for a few minutes. I will be back. Sounds good. Enjoy your food. And then Plexa is uh, making his way through Gunwing Cliffs. Gunwing Cliffs itself is not really anything special. We do actually go through it intentionally. Uh, no, no, no silly shenanigans here. And um, he is also starting to fight stuff here again, and uh, just because it's usually on average faster to fight stuff, and we do still want some kind of levels. And. Um, there is another p uh, couple of points where we want to be a certain level. So um, since it is pretty close and whether it's faster to flee or to fight here, um, he's, he's taking the fights. With the power of Soul Blades, he can uh, progress pretty fast through the fights anyway. Did not get the encounter skip on the way to Naripui, unfortunately. But uh, now that he is there, he is going to go get the Thorn Crown. And uh, you might think, oh, it's a little bit out of the way, you have to do a lash and stuff and climb down. But the Thorn Crown actually boosts your attack power as well. So that will make uh, his Megiddo's even stronger. <laughs> I have been requested if I can tell anybody a, thing, a bit about Pixies, and uh, well, they are we are getting there. So let's talk about Pixies. Pixies are the worst thing in existence. Everybody hates Pixies. Pixies are fast. Pixies cast sleep. Pixies have very powerful energy. Pixies will ruin your day. Everybody hates Pixies. Pixies are going to be in play in the upcoming dungeon, the Kibombo Mountains. And uh, we cannot outspeed them, not in any way. Um, Plexa did actually change his gin setup a little bit just so that we can uh, outspeed a different monster, the gorilla there. But Pixies? Nah, Pixies will outspeed you. Pixies can also show up in a total of three Pixies per party, which means that there's three chances that they will cast sleep, which means that it's very possible for them to just put your entire party to sleep, ruin everybody's day. We hate Pixies in this stream. Yeah, this is the most nerve-wracking part of the whole run right here. Like, I can outplay Poseidon if he's in a bad mood, but I can't outplay Sleep Rock. Nope. 
Who knows, Plexa? Maybe you warded it off earlier by accidentally going into sleep mode. Now maybe the pixies are kinds, and it's like, oh, he's already been sleeping. I would do that every run if that were right. <laughs> Fortunately, there are also plenty of parts in this dungeon that are considered puzzle areas and where there are no encounters. But uh, we already have our first two pixies. And there's the first sleep. No procs, fortunately. Uh, the nice thing, like the, the only nice thing about pixies is that they are relatively weak. They will die to just uh, two area of effect damage attacks from Jenna and Shiba, um, which means that as long as they stay awake, they will be able to clear an entire party of three pixies. Without even needing Felix's help. Felix is actually one of the worst ways to deal with pixies, because his way of attacking right now, his most efficient way, is to just use attacks with a soul blade. Only one target, uh, which means that you will be giving the pixies more chances, more turns to put you to sleep. So it's actually not something we want to do. A little bit of a scary... Uh, Scary party here. Assassins do have quite a bit of damage output, as do gorillas. So, uh, actually ended up using the vial in order to heal for safety, rather than selling it later for money. Should not be too difficult, though, to make up that money. Now at this point he is in a uh, puzzle area, which means that he will not be uh, getting any encounters. Which means that as long as his movement is tight, he will always be able to make this dog cycle. And just trap the dog behind the pillar. Almost crush the dog, honestly. Very rude. And the encounters don't start back up until you get in this particular cave again. Bowie making his way through uh, Yumpy Desert backwards with the help of Avoid so he doesn't get encounters. Also picking up the Trainer's Whip. Um, just to give a little bit of a, a, a spoiler of what it's going to do, the Trainer's Whip is an item that actually gives you access to a, a different set of classes that is only accessible through that item. And uh, how that is going to be useful you will see in Doom Dragon. Ooh, Pixie. If you want to be something scary for Halloween and you are at a party where you have Golems on the last stage runners, you just dress up as a Pixie and they will be scared shitless. Getting another encounter. Ooh, just another one just before the end. Uh, two assassins. Shouldn't be too big of an issue. Yeah, that is how you scare Golden Sun 1 runners, Eon. Uh, you just dress up as a Venus 2 caught by surprise. But I don't know how that costume would look, but that is how you scare Golden Sun 1 runner for sure. But yeah, Plexa did get poisoned there, uh, not actually part of the strats, so uh, <laughs> he does not actually want the poison. And uh, yeah, here we are in Kibombo. As soon as the screen started turning dark there, um, they, there were no more encounters, so Plexa was home safe. And in the meantime, Bowie is making his way through Yumpy, he also got the Guardian Ring on the way, and made sure to set his retreat point to the first room. And the nice thing about Kibombo is that we are finally going to get access to our fourth party member. We are going to get Pierce. He's finally here. And the way we're going to get Pierce is the way we're going to get all of the Mercury Adepts. We are going to significantly impress them by casting Move on a pillar. Mercury Adepts are really into giant hands.
So I've been talking about how uh, in, in Yumpy Desert it is actually very gratifying to get Blitz that way, just using Echo on him, just to uh, one-hit them. It is actually possible still for him to flee on you, but you would need to be caught by surprise and Blitz would have to flee. So, very small chance, fortunately did not happen to either of the others. <laughs> Yeah, this relay is looking to be about 14 hours long with all of the games. The timer is including the time that it took for Golden Sun 1. It's just going to be keeping going up until the 14 hours. Um, the last stage should be about 5 hours, 45 minutes-ish for both runners. So we are still not even a third into Golden Sun the last stage. There is still plenty to go. And there we go, we have significantly impressed peers with our giant hand. Capable of moving plenty of pillars. Alright, I have returned. Welcome back, you're back just in time. We just impressed peers with our giant hand. I missed it. Dang. You missed it, Unforge. And uh, Bowie is just making his way to King Scorpion, hoping to get some Megidos. He has not been getting Megidos. And still not getting Megidos. Very oh. unfortunate. <laughs> and defend Watch, King get, Scorpion as well. He'll get one on the last hit. Oh, absolutely. There it and is. And there you go. <laughs> At that point, the, the normal hit would have killed already, and Megiddo is, is three normal hits worth of damage. Right. Plexa here is going to be setting up by uh, putting a Mercury Gin on every single party member, and then sending them all on standby, and doing it in a way where he can menu pretty easily throughout the menu to get them back on standby, because at this point we're changing our strategy. Soul Blade still pretty good, um, but we also have access to our first tier 4 summon, Boreas, and there is a lot of scary parties here. Uh, most of which will die to just a single Boreas. So uh, in the vast majority of parties, that is what we will be doing. This is one of the exceptions, where with a Prism and a Plasma and a normal attack, that is all it takes. Or you could get a Megiddo. But for the majority of parties, we will be getting the... Uh, getting Boreas. And uh, the reason that Plex has set him up in this particular way as well is um, including changing his party order to make sure that people are in different spots is actually so that he can just menu to the uh, first Mercury Gin on Felix and then Menus. Because this game has terrible gin menus. <laughs> it is so laggy. Yeah. That is that is the biggest struggle for a Golden Sun run runner going to Golden Sun the last stage, no longer having very tight uh, gin menus. Thankfully, the battle menus are still really snappy, but yeah, the gin stuff is... Yeah. That menu is laggy. You also can't wrap the menu. Nope. So if you're at the far left side, you cannot just tap left and go over to the far right in one input. You gotta actually do the whole... You gotta do three rights. Yeah. This little, is actually, takes a little bit of getting used to, for sure. Oh yeah. This is actually why it's very beneficial for me that I only run this game. I don't know any better. I don't know how good the Golden Sun 1 menu is to, to do in speedruns, and I... I think I can appreciate the TLA menu more because of it, <laughs> even though I still acknowledge that it's very awful. Yeah. <laughs> So there are actually a couple of uh, scary, uh, scary encounters that Plexa can get here in uh, in Gabomba statue, and there are monsters known as Doomsayers. And if Bro, I'm straight up not having a good time here. <laughs> yeah, he's getting pretty 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 slow encounters. I'll be honest. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Let's go. It's Bowie. worse than that. Let's it's, go it's, it's, Bowie. Not only is it slow, it's also the lowest experience I can get out of an encounter. True, which true. Because I'm trying to hit experience thresholds. 
<laughs> are you are you actually serious, game? <laughs> Flex is getting salamandered so hard. Oh my god. <laughs> I've never seen this many salamanders in my life. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bro, I'm straight up not having a good time over here. No. <laughs> so even though the encounters, it's like, they aren't dangerous or anything, but... <laughs> well, these, this one are, these are the Doomsayers here. We have Condemn, which can trigger a one-hit KO. Fortunately, it didn't. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we also kind of want some higher level uh, monsters, some higher experience. So even though uh, the Red Devils are slow, because they they don't die to a single Boreas, um, they do give more experience, so you do at least want some of them. Absolutely crazy. In the meantime, Bowie is getting to another scary part of the run. Uh, he is going into Pixie Mountains, so... Oh, how was uh, Plex's Pixies? Uh, he got some Pixies, but they mostly were casting either Synergy or Synergy, uh, or trying to bind his Synergy, so... Didn't really get Warm any. Warm welcome for Bowie here. The Pixie first encounter. Oh yeah. He did have, uh, Plexa did have a scary moment with some assassins and a gorilla pretty early on though, and he actually uh, had some bad targeting, so he ended up having to use a vial to heal rather than to sell later. Yeah, assassins are pretty, pretty sketchy. Not as sketchy as pixies though. <laughs> Plexa doing some fancy out of bounds here. It, well, <laughs> we, it's technically out of bounds. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say it's out of bounds, but yeah, we're basically just uh, resetting the, uh, or, or disabling the low trigger on top of the uh, ladder with a retreat glitch. And then, uh, so that we can climb on top of it and just kind of run along the wall. Happy time. Lexus is actually getting a whole bunch of encounters that don't actually require Boreas to clear fast. And as I say that, there's the devil. <laughs> A red demon, sorry. Okay, Bowie currently suffering. Uh, a three pixie encounter, which uh -huh. I warned you guys. There we go. He's very yeah. safe. <clears throat> he managed to uh, get another synergy off with Shiba, at least. <laughs> We did it. We fixed my name on the commentary. <laughs> I am no. Crucial Sid wasn't correct. Uh, yeah, exactly. I am not no. Crucial Sid. I am Citrical Sid. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, we're getting so many pixies. And oh my god, they actually have a lot of firepower as well, so they can't. They're going down. Not the end uh, of the world, but. Not the end of the world. <laughs> also not great. Another oh. asleep. Oh my! Ooh, avoided okay, the sleep okay, antenna okay, okay. though, so got the synergy off. At least he's at the end of Kibombo Mountains, so the death on Shiba. Okay, it's a little bit of ex lost experience. So, yeah, wow. just reviver though. Luckily, there's a. Uh, you can't get into any of the building. Well, uh, maybe you can get into one of them, but you can't get into like any of the shops or anything in uh, Kibombo. But you can. Uh, there is a healer just kind of chilling up on the uh, mountainside here before you head into the second screen. So, nice easy revive there. 
Plexa actually got away with getting steel without a run, which is very good because that is a extremely slow gin to have run away. <laughs> yep. Yep. I can tell who's sort of secretly rooting for it. I actually, uh, I was actually fixated on Bowie, so I, I maybe if I was hoping for it, it would have been different. Can Plexa get through? Uh, nope, there is one more encounter. Just, uh, just to finish it off, one more Boreas. What a very weird Kabomba statue for Plexa, in terms of encounters. <laughs> very weird. Alright. Well, you may have missed the first time that uh, Pierce got impressed by a giant hand, but fortunately there's two runners here, so... I'm glad I could catch at least one of them. Yeah. Look at this, and the runner's tied uh, all of a sudden. <laughs> oh my god, how did this happen, guys? Oh my god. Bowie coming in hot from behind. With the wrong warp, saving 11 minutes. Let's go. Oh, uh, ooh, oh, oh. Oh, never mind. <laughs> All right, back to, back to business as usual, I guess. Um, Plex is going to be doing a little bit of a puzzle here. Uh, this is the first of the puzzles that gets influenced by the name, and uh, which can be either what Yatildes or uh, Squid Arms in Plex's case. And um, yeah, basically in this case, it just matters that it's uh, the, the least amount of pounds necessary. Uh, in order to get them all, and the fact that it's consistent, so that he always knows just what exactly he has to catch. But yeah, uh, we're kind of like on a timer here, where we're waiting for uh, Akafubu to do his next attempt at getting Kabomba statue active. Uh, Plexa showing an extra pound there for the fans. Thank you, Plexa. And uh, yeah, the... worried about him running out of time. We've got plenty of time. Oh, we're actually just going to stand here for. I, we have so much 45. time that I take a bathroom break in this particular section in my runs. Honestly. Just going for a little run around, getting a little bit of exercise here. Oh, yeah. Mm. Keeping Felix fit and ready. But yeah, the only time that the timer is not running uh, is when you're in menus or when you're uh, casting uh, a synergy because then you have like a little text box pop up, pop up of so. So as such, you want as little pounds as possible. Bowie, in the meantime, setting up for his own Berea strats. Uh, also getting Felix. Any nice sound fans in chat? Where are you going with this Plexa? Oh, there's a there's a door. You gotta wait like two minutes in front of it before we'll let you in. Gotcha. I should play your phone. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Nice bathroom break though, for all you EB runners out there. And we did it. We solved the uh, mystery of the Kabomba statue. And now Akafubu is gonna come in, and they're just straight up gonna ask, like, are, 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 are you the statue? Are you, are you Kabomba? And we tell him, yes, yes, we are. Jennifer very feistily leads him up by the hand, pulls him by the ear, like, look at this. Look what we did for you. <laughs> I love Jenna, man. She, she she does not take notes. He's definitely better than Sheba. I don't know. I'm I'm a team Sheba. I'll be real. Oh, wait with the CBS. Ooh. He's doing all right though. He's all it's all good. 
Yikes, it's good. Though. If you're gonna get a CBS, at least it's on that encounter. Yeah. Um, if anything, you know, getting a little bit of damage in would be nice to uh, do some healing with Felix, get his synergy nice and low. So it could be worse. If that was like a Doomsayer or a uh, Red Demon party, though, who will spook it? Nice. Yeah, so the right reason there. Bowie's using Bowie's gonna just take this encounter in two turns, hoping hoping for some damage, which unfortunately he got uh, a little gypped on there, but that's okay. And it's also the kind of counter where if you just get two attacks without a Megiddo, then it would still technically be faster than a Boreas, but yeah, got a Megiddo, unfortunately. Now this is definitely a Boreas character. Yeah. So the Doomsayers, uh, did you mention this, Sid, the ability they have? Condemn me, oh yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. You, they can they can one-shot you from full health. Uh, instant in, death. Instant death. So you ideally do not want to let them attack. They also have some pretty mean area of effect damage, honestly. So if you get two of them casting Clay Spire, then you might also be in a bit of trouble. Akafubu wearing what seems to be undergarments on his head. That's that's not very that's not very nice. That's inappropriate. He's the panty king, man. He's the panty king. <laughs> And Plex is now going to start his way back, and at this point he is going to be uh, maybe taking a few more encounters. We basically want uh, to have the party at a certain level, which I don't at the moment recall because I haven't ran this game in too long. Which level do we need to be here, Bruiser? <laughs> 13. Thank you. Um, yeah, because, looking for 13 uh, on, the on the lot. Yeah. Other than peers, of course. Because at that point, uh, the calculations actually make it so that fleeing is on average faster again. And we're also going to be getting our good friend. This is... Waft. Yes, this is Waft. Wheezes and Tindaria. We're going to be getting Waft. And uh, Waft likes to run as well, as do all Jin, but I feel like Waft especially likes to bully. And uh, this is a particularly bad one if it runs away because we have to actually go well, like forward into the dungeon a bit, get a screen transition, tr backtrack again, cast growth again, uh, just to get back to Waft. But we should, he only gets one chance to run. We, uh, we do one turn him after he gets his attack. But with Waft, we once again get access to Procne, just like in uh, Golden Summon, it's a very useful summon. So where right now we're using Borea strats uh, for the parts where we actually have to attack for the foreseeable future, we are going to be switching to Procne strats for the pure reason. It is a very fast animation and still a pretty good amount of damage. Ooh, but we're getting a bit of a scary encounter there, two red demons. Um, these do not die in a single Berea, so one of them survives if he's not targeted, which means that he does have to do an extra attack with Felix. Megiddo not needed. Not at all. Very slow. Megiddo. No problem. I, I, I keep seeing fog uh, in Bowie's uh, in in Bowie's menus. Fog is one of those gin that the name it, it just always makes me think. Well, it's clearly a Jupiter gin, so I'm thinking to myself, "Uh oh, he's not gonna have more." <laughs> nope. Fog is a Mercury gin. Yep. Fog is a Mercury gin. It's made of water, man. Yep. Damn, Shuri hitting me with the burritos sounds like burritos. Make, making everybody hungry. Why you gotta do that to us, Fury? I'm actually eating a burrito right now. Well, half of it's gone. <laughs> well, enjoy your burrito. <laughs> Too early to eat it all. Yeah. It's only 11 a.m. here.
Hmm? Alright, so Plexo is coming in on another gin. Uh, we are basically in a little bit of a gin collection uh, part of the run. It's just getting wafted on the way back, but uh, we're also going to be uh, getting reflux right here. Both runners actually fighting gin at the moment that are terrible if they flee. Oh, absolutely. Good um, luck to both of you. Alright, Bowie's safe. Bowie is very much safe. Um, but yeah, these are both extremely long run backs if they if they flee. Yeah, Bowie on steel. Steel's in the bag. Mm -hmm. So this is not reflux. This is this Kindle. Is Kindle. Reflux is in Tandaria. I think every gin is every gin in Tandaria always. Yeah, no problem on Kindle either. And another thing that we're going to get here in the cliffs is a uh, green mushroom. Because that is a healing mushroom and we are going to give that to an old ass man in the town. And he is going to give us a, another uh, another Mars gin. Which is good because we have been very low on Mars gin thus far. We've basically just been rolling with cannon. Yeah, thank you for being around so long and waking up so early for this blue. <laughs> well, it's what I do. Committing to the cause. And uh, Plex is actually at a part of the uh, area where he's no longer getting encounters, fortunately. After a while, it just kind of stops and not in uh, encounter area. One more avoid, since we are very much still high enough level to avoid some stuff here. And then it's back to Madra to go get to the Cyclone chip and uh, get ready to uh, move to the Lemurian ship. While Bowie is finishing up the Kevomber statue. Yeah, just for the people who are turning in now, uh, currently Team Isaac is ahead and. Uh, Team Felix is about 10, uh, 11 minutes behind. But we did have an unfortunate death earlier, so it will, what used to be 10 minutes is probably more like 11 minutes now. But, uh, it's it's probably about 11. Yeah. You basically no fault of Bowie. <clears throat> No, it was the fault of Golden Sun 1, and Satoros in particular. <laughs> yep. There's not much you can do about that man. He is yeah. a scary man. Alright, Bowie not getting an extra pound, making up that time. Let's go. Now he's just gonna wait. I, I do hope that he moves into position soon as well, though. He's... Uh, as long as you're like right in the center, right below that little uh, center statue, then that is the fastest uh, that the cutscenes can go. And speaking of the waiting for the Kabamba statue, uh, this is actually a good, uh, pla good timing for a bathroom break, since Plex is also just sitting in cutscenes right here. So I will be right back. Maybe everyone can take uh, Sid's uh, take Sid's uh, actions here as an example, and maybe get up, get some water, have a little jaunt around your room, you know, get some stretching in. Everybody's I, I'm seeing discount Minardi in uh, in the chat, and I can agree with that. Although the feisty pink lass is uh, quite special herself.
Oh yeah, I forgot to mention tomato jet. Whoops. Right, so the mushroom we picked up um, on the cliffs here is uh, coming into play. Here comes uh, Char. I believe it's Char. Forgetting the mushroom is bad. Yeah, I didn't see the text there, but I'm pretty sure it's Char. Now, uh, Plex is going to be heading out and uh, becoming a boat owner. Congrats, congrats. Felix is like, I should buy a boat. Oh yeah, I'm back just in time for the ship. Yep, boat owner Plexa over here. You want a brand new boat? I want a boat. Boat, boat, boats. Boat's a bit broken though. We uh, we actually have to go to the center of it and places black crystal for it to work. Yeah, the boat was sold as is. Repairs needed. Nice cutbacks on the price though. That's that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so right here we are spreading out our Jupiter Gin for some proccing spam uh, later. And um, we are also uh, putting all of our Mars Gin on Felix in order to boost his strength as much as possible. He is going to be a very, very strong boy. And uh, right here we are also going to be you know, fighting these jellies right here who are going to leave um, some pools of water. And with this particular one, if you position yourself just right before you fight the jelly, you should be able to get a frost clip right afterwards, which we've seen once in Gone Someone. Uh, we're only going to see it once in this particular run as well, uh, for an actual particular frost clip. Ooh. And you only get one chance! That is unfortunate. So hopefully we get to see it on Bowie's end instead. Of course, there are many, many other types of clips, like move clips with the pillars and stuff. It's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty specific setup. Oh, uh, if you, I if you, if you're not in exactly the right position with, like, the, I'm almost positive the right sub pixel as well, you'll just walk by it like that. Oh, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Doesn't lose too much time. Gives Bowie a little bit of room to catch up here. Exactly. Yeah, man, Felix mad, Felix pound. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, one of the reasons that we're uh, also putting uh, all of the Martian on Felix is to put him into the Brute line of classes, which gives him access to Planet Diver, which is really good. Uh, it does also use Synergy Points, though, and we have to make sure that we have enough for another move clip coming up, which you know, might fail once or twice. So not going to drain Felix's PP too much. But uh, it is good to have it a little bit drained because right after the ship, there's also going to be another retreat glitch uh, in the next dungeon. Um, but for whenever we don't have enough synergy points to do a planet diver, we can instead just use either char or a cannon in order to destroy these uh, jellies in one hit with the power of the soul blade, boosting our attack stat. A little bit of help from the throwing crown. Always got waft in the bag. Very nice. I would have been very sad to see yeah. any runs on uh, any Jin fleeing on Bowie's end after like suck up and <laughs> that is just time loss that you have zero control over. Nice little move clip on Plexus side right there.
and Bo Bowie just switching over to the flea strats for the foreseeable future. I'm not gonna lie, I do get um, the, the fleeing through through uh, the um, mountains here. I it makes me very anxious. Uh, same. <laughs> it's definitely quote unquote faster sometimes TM though. So. Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely that. But it's 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 still Kabubo Mountains. There's still a lot of scary creatures there. You might be higher level, but it's still scary. I don't know if it was mentioned in, in TBS during the first Golden Sun run, but you can flee. You're guaranteed to flee if someone in your party is stunned or asleep in Golden Sun 1. You will 100% get the flee on the next turn if, if one of your party members is under that status effect. That does not carry over to Golden Sun 2, unfortunately. Unfortunately not. So, after a little menu to get your gin set up and get some oil drops on Pierce for this particular fight, uh, we are gonna go into Acra Hydra. Uh, we specifically put Pierce into a class where he has access to impact so that we can do double impact to get Felix to his full attack power before uh, he ever does his first attack. And now it's a matter of praying Mikidos and counting attacks. Uh, every uh, Mikido is worth three attacks, every uh, critical hit is worth one and a half attacks and uh, uh, so it's basically just counting attacks making sure that we uh, get to the right amount of attacks before we get to the last turn where we just kind of finish things up with summons everybody cross your fingers for bowie here going into kindle we don't no leave for bowie <laughs> It's a sad gin to have flee. I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Perfect. He's in the good. He's in the good. Ooh. Ooh. Felix had one HP there. Very scary. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in this fight, we also put all of our Mercury gin on Sheba so that she has access to the wish line of synergy to just kind of keep everybody up to speed. Um, and uh, yeah. She, she can keep everybody healed, but there, there is a chance that, that he does an attack that just procs and puts you at 1 HP. Very scary. And um, if that Aqua Hydra just kind of starts spamming Raging Floods, he can very much outdamage your Wish spam as well. So uh, it's not the freest of fights, but as long as you get a decent amount of Megiddos, you should be good. I find if you can even just get one off, it's like, okay, should be fine. Should be fine, you're just sad because it's a very slow fight. <laughs> yeah. Ideally, you want that to be like four turns. I mean, yeah, also just doing some extra damage with some oil drops that you can pick up from the barrel. And uh, now that we're getting a little bit more gin and getting access to like more improved classes, uh, that is definitely something you're going to be seeing a whole bunch, where we're putting particular characters into uh, classes of a different elements just to give them access to the wish line of healing. Um, very good for just easily healing up after every, every battle, rather than having to cast cure on every individual person. Better for uh, synergy management as well. Move for the fans from Bowie as he heads into the cutscenes and uh, Lex is on his way to get to the Sea Gods tier from the temple. And uh, we're at this point where it's going to be very important that after he casts Frost on these pillars, he is going to not run out without, uh, <laughs> without grabbing the Sea Gods tier first. Definitely not something I have done on multiple occasions. How about entering and only having like 8 PP on, on piers? How about that one? Oh yeah, that, that one's <laughs> happened plenty of times to me before. <laughs> yeah, you do not regen PP in here, so... <clears throat> oh yeah. So, you're going uh, back to the overworld. <laughs> exactly, and you usually do not realize that until your second frost, which means that you will then <laughs> yeah. be at like 3 PP and having to 
regain a whole bunch, maybe even taking the hits and taking this Psy Crystal and healing it up that way. <laughs> Speaking of Psy Crystals, you see Plexa just grab one there. Psy Crystals are actually... Psy Crystals are the water of life of this game. But Golden Sun 1, you're like, oh, I need waters of life. This game, you're like, oh, holy crap, I need Psy Crystals. We have plenty of ability to revive people uh, in, in the TLA run, but... Yeah, PP can be pretty scarce at some points, so... Having the, sure. the extra Psy Crystals is a big help. Uh, Black Side this time doing the same out of bounds as earlier in the Shrine of the Sea God, but this time we're looking to get to the end of the dungeon rather than to where Breath is hanging out, so... Taking a different path out of bounds and just going straight to the end of the dungeon. So yeah, shoutouts to the Golden Sun 2 randomizer. This game does in fact have a randomizer. It's pretty crazy. GS2randomizer.com Yeah, shoutouts to Karanum. Not the biggest rando enjoyer myself, but uh, it's pretty nice to have one. It's just very awesome that it exists for a game like this at all. Yeah. <laughs> Plexa fighting a uh, small boss there atop uh, the uh, uh, Shrine of the Sea God. Uh, the boss uh, in question is, of course, picking up one of those prongs. It's Not the hardest awesome. prong boss, but you know, still, still poses a threat sometimes. Oh yeah, the final boss is in Ankle Ruins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Plexa actually going out of his way to go all the way back to Kaboma statue in order to get another gin. Uh, it is mud. And uh, it is really the only good option we have to get our fourth Venus gin. <laughs> Fortunately, mud is also quite useful. He does uh, ha lower the agility of enemies. So Yeah, mud's great. Mud's great when he doesn't run. Mud is basically vine. And Bowie getting another Marshton over there. Good old Char. This is also the first use of Cyclone, uh, which is an ability that we got from the mayor. Cyclone chip. And we see it a whole bunch, especially in Jupiter Lighthouse later. But it's quite nice, it can like clear out the grass and then there go through those little cyclone <laughs> portals. And there's the flea! Hello, yep. bud! Here it comes. Bowie, Bowie, Bowie. <laughs> so we've seen this boy run up to three times in a row. <laughs> there's number one. Yeah, mud is... Um... Depending on Plex's PP too, like you, you want to retreat after Mud. You can't always, you're not always going to be able to do that if uh, Mud Mud flees. Yeah, but your PP is still quite low from the retreat glitching you did in uh, yeah. near, so you really can only afford one. All right, there it is. Bowie starting his voyage on becoming a boat owner here. Let's see if uh, let's see if Bowie gets the frost clip actually. Bowie looking to evolve into Bodhi the hero. <laughs> Captain Bodhi lining up here. Oh, position a little off. This can be really finicky to get lined up for. And position looks good. Nice. There we go. Very nice cross flip. Saving a little bit of time over flex on that one. Yeah, Captain Bowie saving a little bit of time there. It's... Go, Captain, my Captain. 
Anyway, we have Plexa now having mud finally. Having gathered all of these miscellaneous things. Finally going on his sea voyage. To the wonderful island of Yamato. To his beloved shop girl. Was it was it Yamato that's definitely not Japan, or was that Izumo that's that's definitely uh, not Japan? Izumo is a, is is the city. The consonant is, is I think Yamato is okay. definitely yeah. not Japan. <laughs> right, right, right. Definitely, definitely not. But we setting up for another move clip right here. Nice. Connects first try. Indeed. Hey. Subpixels said yes. Indeed. And yeah, at this point in the run, Plexa is just kind of doing his Procne strats on the C. Uh, it's unfortunately the best thing we have, really. Um, that is also decently fast, but there are still some encounters that cannot easily be cleared by Progni. Uh, specifically, when we see the Merman, we, 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 don't, we don't like those. They're slow. And while bees are fast, they also give no no experience, so we don't necessarily want to see bees either. So Speaking again, of bees. Hello, bees. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we do still have an experience threshold to meet. We we, we want Jenna to hit level 19 during Aqua Rock. So that we can switch from um, Procne and Thor strats there to Synergy Usage strats, because at that point she unlocks Flare Storm. Here's also going to be our go to plan of attack for Tendaria right afterwards. But that's not until Aqua Rock. We still have uh, Gaia Rock up first. Here is the Izumo Shop Girl. Lexa's beloved. Let's see how Bowie does on uh, Megiddo's. Indeed. Let's see if we get one first turn. No. No first turn Megiddo. I do hope that he gets some good procs. Try and get a decently fast Aqua Hydra out of there. Okay. There's two. There's two. In the meantime, Plexa is going ahead and getting a safety water of life. Here in Izumo. About a 20 second investment, but definitely well, definitely well worth it for a uh, relay. Oh yeah. Are we getting his Megiddo there on the previous turn? Mm hmm So I believe he's at, what, five, six now? Bit of he's poison at though. Oh, there we go. Okay, oh, he's, in, he's, in, he's in business now. Bowie is clear uh, for takeoff. Oof! <laughs> this is scary. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> Fortunately, we are in the final turn where he's just gonna clear it out. But ooh, that is, that is scary. Good thing Jenna didn't have the poison. Yeah, oh, no, no kidding. She died anyway because she yeah, would have yeah. been a final hit. So yeah, she would have been good. Yeah, so if you're poisoned and you uh, you do an action, but it's the final action in the fight, you will not take the poison tick. Alright, and then uh, Plexa has made his way over to Gaia Rock after doing a little bit of a, another shop menu and stealing from an old man in Izumo. He uh, got the festival coat, and the nice thing about the festival coat, aside from just higher stats, is that it also raises your luck, uh, which will be very beneficial over Poseidon, because Poseidon also has stuff that can insta-hit you, and the festival coat will basically prevent that for one character. So you can put it on the character that you think you need the most. Um, unfortunately, there are many that you need the most in Poseidon, but every little bit helps. I, I'm Team Piers. Um, I tend to leave it on Shiba myself, yeah. just for faster menuing, and I've gotten away with it thus far, but <laughs> Piers is a very safe bet, absolutely. A <laughs> um, little bit of a retreat glitch there to just kind of warp to the outside. Very nice. Uh, another thing that's, um, the, um, let's see, the Plexa got during the shop menu. 
uh, was just some better better items, really, some better stats, and uh, maybe... I don't know if he got the Psycho Store already or if he's saving that for Poche Islands. Are we getting trashed around by a merman a little bit there? It looks like he's fine. So the especially important part in the Izumo item uh, shop menu is, is the War Gloves, which much like the Thorn Crown also boosts his attack status. So that's that's quite good. And then some Platinum Circlets just for some more defense, because we are still having some very dangerous fights coming up. Huge fan of what Bowie's doing here, grabbing the Psy Crystal first so that the, uh, the tier of the Sea God is the the last thing in his inventory for just a slightly nicer uh, placement menu in the Shrine of the Sea God. That is very smart. And your your shop menu is not always going to be the exact same here because of all amount of random drops and stuff, so yep. just seeing that and capitalizing on it is very good. Lexa having one more. Um, oh, that's unfortunate. Opponent. His first move. Um, I don't know what happened, but he canceled it. You really want to? You're you're super looking at your your PP through here. It's really important that you have a decent amount when you're up on the. You, that's that's what he's doing right now. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You you want to? You're retreating on this screen, and then you're doing a retreat glitch. Um, Pretty soon after, with w actually with another retreat after you uh, engage the leaf puzzle in side mm -hmm. of Guy Rock, so it's it's tough. It's tough to manage your PP well here. Exactly. Yeah. So if you get any amount of extra moves while trying to do that move clip, you better just run around in that little section and regenerate some, because otherwise you're gonna have to be running around in areas with quite high encounter rate. Honestly, so you, you do not want to find out you're short on PP for a retreat and then have to move around there. In terms of battles, we've also kind of moved on to a different strategy now that we have Mud, uh, rather than going for Procne strats. Uh, here it is very fast to set up a Jin menu for uh, Judgment, since we now have four Venus Jin. And uh, Judgment kills a lot of things here in this stage, and it's uh, the fastest tier 4 summon that you can do. So it's very nice to have. Much, much better than having to use Boreas all the time. Yeah, we love Judgment. Oh yeah. Surprisingly, it's still strong enough, even though we're in the Earth Dungeon, so it's just, just yeah, I love Judgment. I <laughs> uh, should, should note there are a couple of encounters that are going to be a little problematic for just Judgment, like two of the uh, stump head looking guys, I can't remember their name. Uh, you'll have to do a little bit extra damage with Piers on those, but for the most part, just spam Judgment, yeah. Yep, and then there's also the clay golem in combination with the gargoyle. That's is particularly yep. tanky. Yep. There are still ways to clear those in one turn, of course, but can just mindlessly spam judgment for those. Of course, then there's this encounter as well, which there he is, the golem and the gargoyle. <laughs> the golems have so much uh, uh, Venus resistance. So. Oh yeah. But with the right amount of targeting and other people doing their moves, not a problem. It appears getting 40 damage in with an attack in here is really nice, because it's like, that is a... That is not an amount of damage to just laugh off. That's actually not bad at all for, for just an attack. And then this is the retreats that we really wanted our synergy points for. So exactly. Next, uh, running around for a good amount of time, fortunately, because you had just enough synergy points to do that retreat. Time for Bowie to save time on mud. Let's go. Mud time. So the unfortunate thing in uh, my, in Gaia Rock though is that there are these little uh, these little no mages. They are faster than you, so they will still outspeed your judgment. Oh, he's sealing that time save. Oh yeah. So this right here are the leaf. Uh, the thing to note on these little platforms that Plex is on right now, you can actually fall off in between them. Yeah, um, yeah you have to be careful with your transitions for sure. 
If you're like in the middle of them when they move, you'll fall off. And if you get an encounter in the middle of them when you're moving, you'll fall <laughs> off. Not fun. That is a huge time loss. Oh yeah. Looks like getting some uh, some slower encounters here, Ding. Yeah, Plex is not getting the greatest uh, encounters in here. You'd be surprised just how hard Gaia Rock can drain your time on the encounters alone. Mm -hmm. At times, I just lose time in Gaia, and I'm like, really? Was it that bad? Oh, there's another one. The TLA <laughs> special. Why am I losing time? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the Woodwalkers. Ah, Woodwalker. Yeah. Not Stumphead. Good enough. Close. Close, yeah. Close enough. They're yeah. basically Stumpheads. It's fine. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What I'm curious about though is is Bowie going to opt to skip the safety water of life in order to save some time? Because if I, I was in his position, will. I, I probably I think would do he, that. I think he's going to struggle internally very much with this, but I think he will skip it. Yeah. I know Bowie likes to. Not he's not. I'm not saying he always plays safe, but I I have a feeling he wants to, but he might just skip it. I would definitely skip it in this position. Play risky, make up the time. Felix gonna scoot over automatically after the cyclone here. Funny animation. The nice thing um, with a lot of these cyclone puzzles in Gaia Rock is that you really only need to be on the edge of the uh, of the grass when you cast the cyclone, and the game will do the rest of it for you. It's a really big range. Oh, yeah. Will Plex to drop in on the screen? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Little screen transition glitch there. Yeah. It's one that consistently happens in Echo Ruins as well. And then using the Dancing Idol to get these lights. So... We are actually getting all of the lights on the Serpent, and each of these lights um, makes it so that the Serpent gets weaker and does not recover as much uh, health at the end of its turn, um, because the, otherwise it's very hard to get down. Um, if you manipulate your luck properly, you, you can uh, very much just build up your... Uh, or build down his uh, defenses enough so that you can summon rush him in one turn. Not exactly possible in a no manipulation run like no safe and quit though. So we very much go for those safety lights. And um, he actually took them in a pretty peculiar order. He actually got the, those three first and actively skipped uh, the fourth light. And, yeah, Bowie, uh, Bowie is opting to not get the water of life. Ooh, that is... Yeah. Good call. Good call. Yeah. Until, uh, until we get to Poseidon and Poseidon bullies and then it's no longer a good call. But <laughs> we'll see. Fingers crossed. But yeah, the reason why Plexa saved this upcoming light for last is that there is going to be a uh, retreat warp directly afterwards that is going to bring him directly into the maze after he gets this, uh, this last light right here. And both of our runners now in Gaia Rock. But we catching up little by little. Now this uh, this puzzle that Bowie's on this this puzzle actually has a pretty cool solve. You're he, you're gonna see him get a nice uh, specific position here, and you can actually move the the rock or whatever stump thingy into your sprite. Basically, really nice easy solve here. Yeah, that saves quite a lot of cast of move. Yeah, yeah, this puzzle is very annoying. Plexa had an Into the Maze. Uh, this maze is the second puzzle that is entirely based on your name. So as long as you always pick the right name, you will always have the, right, the exact same puzzle setup. You will not have to cast Growth on the center at all. 
Now, now I noticed this uh, not too long ago and didn't mention it. I First time noticing it this run, Plexa actually has a different Felix name. Uh, yes, he, uh, he went for the exact same characters. Yeah, um, the but, Y in but, the middle. The Y in the middle. Squid arms. And, uh, as long as the total value loads up to the same, then he gets the exact same buzzes. Just a little bit of swag, I guess, then. That puzzle section is actually pretty scary because you're going in between room and room to room using summons to clear the enemies. The rooms are so short that you don't always get a recovery uh, for your gin that you used in the previous encounter because every transition of the screen resets that counter. You need to yeah. travel a certain amount of steps per sc in one certain screen to be able to get a recovery on your gin. So. Exactly. I usually end up having to take at least one encounter without uh, actually having access to judgment. Yeah. Me too. It's annoying. Some... Yeah. Feels bad. Feels bad. And now we're heading into the serpents, and Plexa actually set up, uh, in this case, Pierce this time to be our healer by uh, putting him into a clash with access to Wish Synergy, giving him all four of the Venus to do so. Uh, he is still going to be helping damage as well. For the first turn, we're just going to use Shade uh, to uh, protect us and then into Boreas. And the nice thing is, since Shade happens before the cast of Boreas actually happens, uh, that means he Shade will be ready in time for the Boreas cast. And after that, we're going to be building up another Procne and another Boreas over the next couple of turns, uh, hopefully surviving. Uh, but the bad targeting, it can, be, can get rather scary. But yeah, just kind of building up her summons again, and then uh, finishing off with another Boreas and Blocky. No, the Ooh. the poisons adding up here are actually can be problematic, depending on how long your fight goes. Plex has got a few Megidos though, so I think he should be fine. Pretty much the only thing you don't want to see is Heavy Press. Yeah, Heavy Press is one of those abilities that can just proc and put you at 1 HP. You really do not want to see that, because the w Wish does heal you, yes, but Wish only heals so much. So, it will put you in a very scary position after that. And Serpent gets multiple turns. The first boss that we go against gets multiple turns. Fortunately, we've reduced the amount of turns that it gets. So Bowie making his way past the move clip just fine and getting the uh, getting the dancing idol. So yes, mighty press her back. Oh yeah, mighty, mighty. They get press uh, either way. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, Plex are making it through just fine. Perfectly fine boss fight right there. Now we're gonna go break a couple of players' hearts here by opting not to get the Cloud Brand after we defeat Serpent. So getting it quite slow, Felix is in a very peculiar situation with his synergy points, so he only has so much to cast sand. And uh, most of our damage is gonna come from summons and synergy, so getting that Cloud Brand is not gonna be all that useful. We already have a Soul Blade. Sorry, fans. No cloud brand for the fans. Perhaps Plexa will get the TL brand instead. <laughs> Always repping the TL brand. Oh, we being fine on SP management as well. Getting a retreat off. Not having to take any extra encounters and stuff. And now we're doing some menuing to get back to the Procne setups. After his left, Jupiter Jin also recovers.
So at this point, Plexi is still taking encounters on the sea, just to get a little bit of extra experience. They're not the highest experience encounters anymore on the sea, but they're still worth it, and we're trying to get Jenna to level 19 as soon as possible in Echolux so that we can switch away from the summon strats, no longer have to stand by uh, our uh, Jin after every fight. And uh, as a matter of fact, once Jenna hits level 19, the uh, average runaway chance is actually so good that he's going to be switching to flea strats as soon as we get that level. And Plex has made his way to a Poetry Islands. So here in the Poji, we are going to be getting Haze, our uh, fifth, or fourth, sorry, fourth uh, Jupiter Gym, giving us access to Thor. Now, we don't actually want to use Thor. Thor is a very slow animation. But uh, it is very nice to have for some boss fights later on. Just, just Jupiter Jin are good, and Haze in particular is good because Haze can uh, completely protect someone from damage for one turn. So uh, whenever you have like an ability that you absolutely need to get off in a boss fight, you can Haze that person so that they have no risk of dying. Might as well mention, <clears throat> though, just right now that uh, I don't don't know what Thor has been doing in the time between Golden Sun One and Golden Sun Two. He's he's been running laps around the gym. He's he's a little bit faster in TLA, but not so fast that we want to use it over other summons. But I think it's like what a, a second or something faster. The the Thor animation in TLA c compared to TBS, I think it's like one second, one one and a half maybe. Yeah, I don't know the exact data. That's it's still slow, fairly. but. <clears throat> It's an improvement, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Black's also getting another mint right here. He's been getting a couple of mints throughout the, the run, and those are basically just uh, agility boosting stats that we use on the on specific people just to make sure that their agility is high enough, so that the turn orders are good enough, so that we can outspeed certain monsters, certain bosses. So. Those are all oh, we kind of suffer in the same fate as Plexa and Gaia Rock. It just seems, seems to be getting a bunch of slow encounters. Oh yeah, I've been I've seen so many golems and gargoyles today. It's crazy. Plexa doing a little bit of an extra menu here just to go get the Water of Life, as well as the Angelic Ankh. The Angelic Ankh is just to get a slightly better uh, stat stick onto Jenna. Uh, the the reason <clears throat> you're gonna see runners like skirting beaches like pretty hardcore is just because there's no uh, like your your step count won't won't tick up uh, for like a couple of frames as you're bumping it up against uh, beat certain beaches. Yeah, it's very hard to properly map like those encounter tiles uh, when it's like so close to land uh, yeah. that you can't actually go on. So it's very beneficial to just try and get those dead zones. Are we setting up his retreat warp here? Head <clears throat> mm -hmm. into the maze. Time. Oh yeah, very much memorize this puzzle. I would like to say I've memorized this puzzle, but I always lose track of where I am. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say even if you have it written down right in front of you, it's still yeah. hard because of the encounters. It, it, it like you have you think about an encounter, you get out of the encounter, you're like, oh wait, where am I? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it happens to me every damn time. Whew. And then once again with the golems, dude. Once again with the golems. Yeah, sad. Mm -hmm. Nope. 
Plexa climbing his way up to the only retreat glitch that is significantly, well, any amount of significantly useful in <laughs> Acrobat. Yeah. After that, it's mostly normal play. This is actually my my favorite dungeon. Plex is entering right now. I quite like it. It's, it's uh, casually, it's one of my favorites in the run. It's, it's pretty good. It's just nice, nice, nice and chill. I know Plex absolutely loves it though. <laughs> because of yeah. it's relatively boring compared to other dungeons and things with the strats. I kind of like it. It's a nice little, you know, you just, you stop and smell the flowers a little bit. Exactly. It's just time to breathe. And the song <laughs> is so good. So cozy. Nice to drift off to. Ooh. All right, Serpent. Be nice to our friend Bowie as well. Are we getting his menu in check here? Is, is Depending on Pierce's here? PP, he might... Oh, Pierce's PP is fine. If it's a little bit low, you might want to use a Psy Crystal on him, but he's totally fine right now. Yeah. I'll make sure your healer has enough energy. Big epic I respect that practical. save. That is a mighty press save. <laughs> that, is, that is a mighty press save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not... So once again, turn one, getting that shade in, and then into the breeze, and the Brockna get some initial damage in. Uh, make sure to like keep some of the damage on as Serpent heals over the couple of turns, and then just get another, this time, boosted Boreas and Brockna in. Plex has just kind of been doing some, some small skips here and there, like was skipping a tile while climbing up uh, just to save a water cycle and walking diagonally over the water so that we don't have to push a rock. Small stuff like that. Oh, we having significantly better luck on the poisons thus far. Now, Shade is pretty good, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, shade is good, but not so. You know, it's not going to do anything again for you if you're if you're up against a an instant death proc on a mighty press. At least I'm fairly certain it doesn't prevent I, it. Yeah, I don't think it does. Instant death, fun mechanic. Oh, absolutely brilliant! Everybody loves it. Gotta love that instant death. He's looking fine right now, though. He's he's, he's getting close. I think he's got one Megiddo on. The Mikitos are just bonus in this fight, really. They yeah. aren't necessary for a quick kill, but if they, if you get a Serpent that heals particularly often, then they can make sure that that's no problem at all. Oh, there go the poisons. Poison proc on Shiba, that, that can be scary. Okay, it seems he's on his la on the last turn here. I don't think that cure is going to matter because of that Megiddo. No. Oh! Um, what? He actually, he actually opted to be safe and do a wish uh, instead of Boreas just to make sure Shiba didn't die. Yeah. Which I, I, I respect the play. Yeah, for sure. Full party poison. That is a lot of poison. Yeah, not the not the best fight, unfortunately. But so at least he didn't it. die twice. I... <laughs> <clears throat> is it getting old yet? Anyone? Okay. No. Okay. It's gonna keep haunting you for the entire relay, isn't it? Okay, man, you just have Plexa die to Sidon or something. Mm -hmm. And yeah, over on Plexa's end, there's just gonna be a whole bunch of uh, casting Procne and Thor to do battles until he can run. Uh, casting a whole bunch of frost. Uh, there is uh, one more little uh, move clip coming up later, but that's that's about it. 
very chill dungeon, Hakarok. Relax and all cool. Ah, yeah, there he goes. He is currently going into the other class setups and switching to flea strats because Jenna has hit level 19. Bowie squeezing his way through the little piece of land there. Yeah, that's a cool little strat. You're not exactly supposed to be able to travel through like that, but... Yeah, not really. But with the right movement, you can squeeze through. Yeah, like if you try to go down and, and just hold diagonal, you won't go through. You actually just have to hold down and then right, and you'll yep. squeak on by. Lexa getting bullied by a jelly. Not letting him run away. We're also at the part where uh, uh, we now have this little uh, last clip, or last little move clip. Uh, Plexus is going to be setting up for that right now. And this will actually be the last one that you see in the run. You better enjoy it. Woo! Okay. Woo! Okay, there we go. And back to the normal Aqua Rock. Uh, this is immediately getting bullied by a Sea Dragon. No escape. Are we actually having to do a little bit of money management there? Yeah. Run hasn't been packing out too well with those two extra deaths, so... Making sure that he can afford the water of life. Could have opted to uh, get it after the death warp instead, but it's, it's nice to have early. So we're not too far away from just having revives at all times. Yeah. Yeah, we don't see revive on anyone in Golden Sun 1. I mean, you could at the very end if you rearranged your gin around, but you pretty much have access to revive from here on out in this game, which is really nice. There's a deck first with Plexa there. Making his way to Aqua Rock. For the longest time, we actually used to, like, while we did switch classes here in, in Aqua Rock, um, we did still fight because uh, for quite a long time, the uh, calculations on whether fleeing was faster were incorrect for a good portion of the run um, until Plexa sat down and recalculated everything. And realized, huh, fleeing is faster here and here and here. Oh, we should we should be fleeing way more often because it is on average faster. But it has resulted in uh, more sections where if you just got bad luck, then well, sorry, it's not faster that time for you. <laughs> just on average. Oh, we actually opting for a Thor here just to make sure that he gets these mermen out of the way. Doesn't want any of their business. And uh, he's actually staying on the water as long as possible, just uh, 
to make sure that he gets as little encounters as possible. So they, they, they take a bit longer. You know, Plexa is moving some pillars around, and you might be thinking, why doesn't he just do the same move clip again that he did with the previous puzzle that looked like exactly like this in the pillars here? And that is actually because these pillars do not have any collision for you to stand on at the top. Uh, in the previous room, there was actually a spot where you could get a pillar close enough that you could jump onto the pillar. Uh, in this room, that is not the case. What you are walking on after solving the pillar is just a generated path from the, the Dao stone right there. Uh, you are, there is no actual collision on the pillar parts. Are we going for the little retreat glitch here? Another one of those cases where we didn't used to do this like way, way long ago, just because we thought that it didn't save any time whatsoever, but didn't account for encounters properly. And Plexa is over at the giant synergy crystal getting a free refill. Yeah, you're gonna want that PP f carrying on from quite a while now, so that refill there is actually really nice. Oh yeah, we are not going to be taking any ins for a very long time. As a matter of fact, we're just going to be managing our synergy points until we get to, like, the, the Western Sea, really. Getting some love in the chat for the turtle dragon. He is a very nice big boy. Oh, Acrorock does also have the upgraded version of the pixie here, the fairy. And they are, fortunately, they are nowhere near as plenty and uh, nowhere near as dangerous. Oh, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen one of those. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So by talking about the fairy on Plexa's screen, I think I just willed a fairy into existence on Bowie's screen. <laughs> but yeah, they're just here to remind you that pixies exist and make you unhappy. Nice little bit, uh, bit of cool movement here for Bowie. It, it, it doesn't look hard, it can be a little... It, I mean, it's not that hard. It's a little finicky though. But you can just like run right along the the water line there, and you just boop right out on the other side. Followed it up with a nice text first too. I love to see it. And Flexa has just gotten the Parch ability, which we use exactly twice. Once to get out of the dungeon, we got it from. Are we just getting an attacks first? Love to see it. Yeah, we'll have to see it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much just to get into Tendaria Tower. Where we need to go in order to get the Trine on Prongs. That's kind of where we are uh, after we get the boat. Uh, we want to get into Lemuria. And uh, in front of Lemuria is waiting our good friend Poseidon. And the only way to actually be able to do anything to the Poseidon whatsoever, we need the Trident. So we need to get three Trident prongs from the three towers, the Shrine of the Sea Gods, Tundaria Tower, and Ankle Ruins. And in order to get into these dungeons, we need to do the rocks, like Gaia Rock and Echo Rock. So it's basically just get this to do this, to do this, to do this. And one big giant fetch quest. But with some very nice dungeons. As JRPG fans, we love fetch quests. Oh yeah. There is actually a side quest in Ghouls on the last stage that is just a gigantic fetch quest between animals, where you bring stuff from one animal to another animal, and then eventually you gain access to a secret dungeon. 
but it pretty much just starts with giving stuff to animals. Any penguin fans? Dude, I love the penguin. <laughs> I'm a big fan of penguins. Pengus and Penguilina, perhaps? <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, so Plexa is reaching Tundaria, where he's going to be uh, transitioning to Taken Encounters again. He's been fleeing for the entirety of Aqua Rock, which is all well and good, but now we're going to start clearing things with pretty much just Flare Storm and Storm Rays, or, I mean, Plasmas if they're really strong in Tundaria Tower, or just attacks with Felix. And uh, he definitely wants to see a lot of those little spike balls and uh, the, the little red guys. I don't know the names of the monsters, I really don't. I just kill them. Uh, and because they, they do give a nice chunk of experience, but they're also pretty easy to kill. Just like, like these guys. Needle Egg and Squirrel Fang. There you go. And the nice thing about a quad in here is you can just do the encounter as normal and throw the uh, far enemy in attack with uh, your Soul Blade. Oh, Plexa Ooh. getting ranged. I see. But yeah, the reason why he's taking encounters again is A, because this area is a little bit more dangerous and B because we do want to start getting some uh, levels again. Uh, not enough to take attacks first as an actual encounter, we still run away from those, but uh, we want to make sure that Pierce has wish well by the time we get to Poseidon. Basically a lot of the stuff we do is to gear ourselves up for Poseidon. We want to see Pierce at level 22 by the end of Ankal Ruins. And then as soon as he hits level 22, if it happens earlier in Ankle Ruins, Plexa can choose to just start running away from encounters again. Also kind of going to depend on the encounter in Ankle Ruins. <laughs> Plexa with the uh, additional attacks first there, kind of thinking like, hmm, do I, do I actually <laughs> run from this? Uh, obligatory spin spins there from, from Plexa. Oh yeah. Doing some smooth moves on the ice. Bowie having no problem whatsoever with his uh, move clip there in Echo Rock, and now gearing up to start running away from stuff. Because it is faster and not worth the experience with that level of monster to keep fighting. And in the meantime, Plexa is making his way to Reflux for real this time with some more nice spins. Ooh. Fancy. Very fancy. There's two ways that he could tackle this. We could try a summon rush, uh, or he can uh, choose to um, do some synergy setups to do a two turn fight instead. Looks like he's opting for the summon rush this time. A reason there and together with a shade because this guy does hit pretty hard. Didn't get a flea. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the reason Plexta had to use that strat is because his uh, his Felix is not level 19. But, it's still a nice quick fight. Unforch. <laughs> I blame the Salamanders, yep. Plexta showing off a nice way to recover all of his gin after that summon rush. Just kind of hold forward into that block and it'll just keep re resetting you. And there's no encounters on the ice, so... Very safe place to do so. That way he has access to all his powerful synergy. 
Chiba getting a little low on HP there, like the piece of paper she is. The low win in the win. Now if you'll watch Bowie, he will be coming up to... Oh my goodness! A couple of very epic jumps there, that's about as exciting as this dungeon is gonna get. <laughs> I, I do love the dungeon though, honestly. It's it's so, cozy. Yeah. It's just not much to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we respect Aqua Rock in this call. Unless Plexa decides to unmute and not respect Aqua Rock. But, you know. But he's a bit busy doing a little trick right here. Uh, he is not going to solve the other half of this puzzle. Instead, he is going to do something very similar to what he did in Gaia Rock, where he just positioned himself correctly so that he can reach the other pillar and uh, from way too far away and push that instead. Does work in a pretty similar way to uh, the, how the move clips work, where you actually pull them onto yourself and uh, clip onto them. But since you don't have to clip on top of them, they are not as precise, which makes it quite nice. Surviving the. Uh... And then the boss of picking up the stuff on the pedestal, though admittedly Tandaria is the easiest because it's not a trident piece. Instead he gets access to the burst brooch, which will then give him access to the trident piece that is at the bottom of Tandaria Tower. Yeah, an unfortunate caught by surprise for Bowie, but he, uh, he survived it just fine. Alexa has one more thing to clear up in Tundaria. There is another Jin to get. He has to go get Whis, another Jupiter Jin. We like Jupiter Jin. Jupiter Jin are very powerful. And we're going to be needing a lot of them later on in the run. Uh, so get all of the ones that we're going to get. Uh, Whis, however, does hit like a truck. Uh, in this case, that is actually quite fortunate, though. We want him to do an area of effect attack and damage as many people as possible. Because after Whis, we are going to be Death Warping. And the last town we actually went into is all the way in Apogee Islands. And Whis ran away. <laughs> Oof. Classic. Yeah, Plex is going to be... Oh, those are some pretty... Yeah, those are some pretty fast taps. <clears throat> <laughs> Yeah, Wheeze is kind of like Vine. In a sense, if you just tap, he'll show up. Ooh, Bowie getting hit with a pretty scary guy now. One death. Has access to revive by now though, so it is not the, no longer the biggest deal if people die. Just slow, that's all. And now what Flex is doing here is he is uh, trying to summon a whole bunch of summons that he actually does not have enough gin for. And this is the uh, fastest way to get an action in um, that doesn't damage your opponents so that you don't accidentally kill them, but also doesn't defend so that you take less damage yourself. And there's the Death Warp, and then we're back in Apoji Islands. And could choose to get the revive from the shrine, but that is very slow, and we have access to revive, so that's just what we're doing. But that does also mean that's, uh, once again, pretty important synergy point management. You do have enough for some revives.
couple of quick retreats out of here, and Bowie's on his way to Tundaria. And Plexa is on his way to El Hafra because now that he has the burst brooch, we can fix the boat. And why do we need to fix the boats? We just need to fix the boats because we need Briggs to actually return to Champa so that we can continue our side quests in Champa. Because we're actually gonna need uh, Briggs' Obaba to uh, forge us that tribe. But yeah, at this point, Plex is a high enough level that he's just uh, gonna flee from stuff on the sea. It's not really that much experience on there anymore, not really worth the time to fight them, considering the flea chance he has. Once he gets back to the con uh, to land here, to continent, uh, he uh, can actually avoid again. That avoid will actually be pretty... Uh, will last him uh, for the way back as well. And it's just a matter of fixing the boat. And a whole bunch of cutscenes. And we're gonna see how Bowie holds up in Zendaria. Getting a nice Megiddo. <laughs> Megiddo. Flare Storm to get rid of these enemies. One of the big reasons, other than the fleeing, that uh, we want Jenna to be level 19 is so that she has access to a Flare Storm. And the nice part about this part of the run in Tenaria is also that we actually have two healers in our party now. Both Felix and Pierce are in an, a class where they have access to Wish. So we can kind of spread out the PP usage, make sure that uh, everybody's where they need to be. Still definitely being semi-careful not to just, you know, um, heal just as much as you want. You kind of want to be a little uh, conservative with it, but... Exactly. Even is valuable. Yeah, even with how much you have, it is... Yeah. There is some really tight PP management going on for a very long time. point where I personally got sick of it and routed in an extra, like extra invisible <laughs> after the Laria. Slower though, so uh, what these what these guys are doing is definitely faster. If you manage your PP well, then uh, you will be at the exact right points that you need to be later on. If you look on the left uh, to, to Plex's screen, you'll see little Aeolio running off the screen. I Is he... Is, now, is Aeolio in any other Golden Sun games? Hmm. hmm well, maybe, you know. It's next generation of, of adepts, maybe, you know. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not entirely sure. I think I heard them talking about trying to route Aeolio out of Dardan at some point. <laughs> Hey, I'm pretty sure he's not in the run anymore. But <laughs> oh my god. He's in the game. <laughs> Can't say that I've managed to keep track of everything in Dark Dawn. It's that, that game has had some serious developments over the past years. Ian Briggs doesn't die, so technically he lives forever. 
forever. Since, you know, there's never going to be a Golden Sun 4. <laughs> <laughs> That'll remind me. <laughs> uh, sad. I'm hearing some rumors that Aeolio might or may not be in the run still. We will never know for sure. You better stay yeah, tuned for Dark Dawn to, sure. to find out if Aeolio is in the run or not. Stay tuned, everybody. Dark Dawn's going to be exciting. All right, Bowie's coming up to his reflex fight. Uh, looks like Felix is level 19 for him. Yep, up yep. the up synergy fight. Yep. Oh, no, I guess not. No, he's using this. He's using the level 18 strat. Okay, didn't run, so no worries. Just walking during a gutscene over there. Wait, I I didn't even know you could do that. Me neither. <laughs> yep. What? What? I need what to pay attention Earth? during this oh, part of the run more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Funny game. Oh, well, he seems unfazed by it. So, yeah. all is well. <laughs> this must just be some secret Bowie tech he's working on. Alexa grabbing another Psy Crystal here in El Hafra as well. Always nice to have around for when you need extra. We're also going to get a bunch of free Psy Crystals later on. You, you get one from uh, Poseidon, you get one from the Flame Dragons. So. It's nice that they just kind of bombard us with that because we do go through them because these dungeons are getting longer and longer and longer until we get to Mars Lighthouse where we're <laughs> just in there for almost an hour. Boss fight included. <laughs> I don't know why, but Jupiter Lighthouse feels longer to me. It feels not. longer. It kind of drags on. There's just kind of yeah. not enough happening compared to Mars, Mars Lighthouse. <laughs> and it's a song, probably. Not that it's a bad song. It's fitting, but it, yeah. it's, it's just kind of there. It makes it feel like not a lot is happening. Bricks giving uh, Plexa the old neener neener. Sticking his tongue out, very mature. Nice, Bowie getting the move first try. Good stuff. I know he. I know he uh, oftentimes says he psych. He feels like he's gonna psych himself out of it, but he's always got it. Yep. Oh, fancy mirror. Oh, wait, what? <gasps> Magic. Yeah, of course, the encounter immediately. What was hidden behind the mirror? A monster. Now, a very important part about Tundaria is is going back in and getting the prong. Surely yes. no one has, has just got the brooch and then left. I have no. never done that ever yeah. in my life. Nope. Definitely not. Mm -mm. <laughs> The prong, the prong on the top of Tendaria Lighthouse or Tower is is a joke. It's 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 free. Oh yeah, getting the burst brooch is fine. Or yeah, the the, the brooch. Yeah. Which which is you know odd because it, it's the same as the other ones, but oh, just you guys wait. <laughs> Got the prong. Very good. There was also some more leaving and re-entering just to make sure that he didn't get an encounter on his way to the prong. And now Bowie is also going to get over to Wheeze. 
see if he uh, gets a first try, Wheeze. Oh, dude, not even an encounter before, Wheeze. Let's go. Nice. Nice, no flea. No flea. Can, can we get a Megiddo in here? Can we get a Megiddo? Using Kindle and Impact to boost. Surely he'll get one. To make sure he doesn't get a second hey, There we go. There it is. You'll have to see it. Making up some time on Plexa right there. Still though, now he has to do a death warp, so... Hopefully... He can get a quick one. And the problem with the death warp is always, it's like, do you commit when you get a lower uh, monster encounter? <laughs> and uh, honestly, if you get at least two, then I would say commit, because there's no yeah. guarantee that your next encounter will be better. Yeah, nothing wrong with this. Once you're at a certain HP, you can just defend with people as well to make the menus go a little bit faster. Been like two down. Should be... Oh yeah, this should be... Uh, should be one or two more turns. Nice. There we go. Good stuff. Not too bad. I've had far, far worse uh, death warps. That crits on Jenna really helped. Well, we'll Plex over here. He is uh, entering Ankle Ruins. Which is a little bit more exciting of a dungeon again, fortunately. Um... He uh, just now just did the first face piece, getting it into place just to make sure that there is sand where he needs to go. And that is kind of going to be a theme in this dungeon where he's going to just be getting face pieces just so he can progress to a different part of the dungeon. And uh, Ankle Ruins essentially has two different sides of it where um, you have to go that way in order to completes one of those final face statues and we don't really want to do both sides so we're just gonna do one and we'll see in a bit how that happens there's also always a little bit of a Something to think about when when you're using sands, because while you're in sand, you cannot get encounters. So do, even though your movement is a little bit slower, do you stay in sand longer to not get encounters? Oftentimes, the answer is yes. That's it. And Bowie on his way to fix that boat. All right, I'm just gonna pop up for another minute, Sid. Sounds good. I'll be back. See you later. So yeah, Plexa's still doing some fighting in Anchor Ruins, wants to see that level 22 on Pierce so that he can get Wish Well. Very important for the Poseidon fight. It's very hard to survive if you do not have the wish well levels of healing for your entire party. And then over here is the face statue that I was talking about before. We need to complete this one in order to uh, make sure that there is a sand flow. And uh, here we have a little bit of a trick where Plexa is going to use sand to clip into this block so that he can just barely reach that pillar and that will allow him to instantly get to where the other face piece is so that he does not have to do the other half of the dungeon.
So we used to do this particular skip on the other side of the dungeon at first, because the initial spot where uh, the clip was found in order to do that was actually at a different sand spot. But as soon as we realized that we can do it with this pillar also, um, then the, we started doing is just doing the left side, because the left side is actually quite a bit faster than the right side of the dungeon. And that knowledge of uh, knowing that we could reach uh, those pillars from like a little bit further away just by clipping into the wall, um, that's Conal hitbox of the move spell that's ended up actually spawning the move clips later on as well. It's a pretty, pretty crucial piece of knowledge right there. The actual sand version is uh, actually only useful in one other location here, uh, which would be in the Gumpy Desert Cave. But um, other applications with normal move clips have been happening in a great deal of places. Lexa like coming up on the uh, last little bits of Ankle Ruins, looks like he did get the level up just in time, at the very least close enough. The thing is you don't have to actually fully be level 22 here. There is still a boss fight coming up called the Abermander boss fight where you can uh, uh, get, get more experience. Uh, looks like he is a little bit short after all, I was, did not quite see who the previous level up was for. So he is having to take a few more encounters just to make sure that he is in a good experience spot. It is absolutely not going to be possible to not have Wish Well for Poseidon, so he really does need to make up time. He really does need to get those encounters, so hopefully if Bowie has been getting some more higher experience encounters, then he might be able to say make up some time here. We will see. Uh, Bowie does did have more deaths though, so he might have missed some extra experience because of that. Not on Pierce though, so here we go. All right, there we go. Um, Plexa double checking whether he is uh, way uh, uh, far enough away from uh, level 22, where the experience that he's going to get on Avamander is going to push him over the edge to get him to level 22, which he is now. And he actually managed to get the final boss, the, the Trident on <laughs> on uh, Ankle Ruins, with an extra sand for the fans. So yeah, that trident piece at the top of Ankle Ruins is actually very difficult to get. Now Plexa actually walked back here in order to uh, get the, the cutscene here for Alex, which happens whenever you try to leave Champa after crossing that bridge. Um, you can get this cutscene after Avamander as well on your way out, doesn't really matter. This way it just kind of spaces out the cutscenes a bit, it's a little bit less mashing and you actually have Avamander in, uh, in between. So as both Bowie and uh, Plexa are now in Cutscene City, I'm going to take this time to give a very special thank you to Rikolt, who has been our tech for the, this uh, relay race and will do so for the entire race. He uh, came in after our original plan just kind of fell through and uh, offered to be our restreamer for the entire thing, set up everything. Absolute champion, thank you so much, Recold. Very good boy. He's been making this uh, go very, very smoothly thus far. Even having backup plans in place. Whenever something went wrong with the timer, he had a backup timer running and everything. All good. So 
So yeah, let's see what's going on in the cutscenes right here. Over on the right we have uh, Briggs escaping with the ship that we just fixed after he broke out of prison. Uh, the mayor being an absolute piece of scum. And earlier he even tried to hit on Jenna, it was just in, in part of the cutscene. Very unsavory person, honestly. And uh, very bad to his employees as well. Not a fan, not a fan of the mayor. And then over on the other side, on Plexus' side, we have uh, Alex being an absolute prick. And uh, just kind of being here, flexing his power, and it's like, hey, if, if y'all aren't going to get your, sh your stuff together, then uh, I'm just going to get these two guys uh, to, to do everything for me. And he introduces Carson and Gatio to you. Uh, basically just two brutes from Prox. Also, by the way, uh, Bobby dies. Uh, I'm just going to drop that bomb on you. That's, that's, that's basically what Alex just did there. So that kind of sends Kraton into a bit of a shock. But hey, that's just what Alex does. Alex, do what Alex do. Bowie now making his way up to Champa and Uncle Ruins as well. Having a surprising amount of trouble with the bees, and the bees are getting <laughs> getting back up. Whew. But yeah, go figure though, even in Gold of the Lost Age where Bobby has died, he spawned more dialogue, because that is what Bobby does, he spawns dialogue. And Plexa is moving his way up to Champa in order to go get Avamander. And uh, the hey, welcome back, Blue. Just in time for Plexa to remember to say no to Obama. Ah, perfect. <laughs> this is another one of those cases where you absolutely have to say no instead of yes, because otherwise she's like, oh, you'll leave us alone? Good. In that case, I will not throw my pet, uh, pet salamander at you. And uh, the Avamander fight is a pretty cool one. Uh, we're going to kind of like try to fish for him to fall asleep. Uh, he is one of the few bosses in the Golden Sun series that is weak to uh, the sleep status. So we're going to be using Waft as well as a uh, sleep spell in order to try and get him to sleep. Uh, other than that, it's basically just uh, building up some Boreas's uh, as well as using a proc mana judgment on the turn four to end them off. Uh, are oh. we going to get a sleepy member? Ah. Oh. No sleepy man there. Now, uh, having Avamander be asleep is not essential, it just speeds it up and makes it a bunch safer. Um, Avamander does have a particularly nasty ability uh, where he can uh, stun you, heat stun. And if he does that on the wrong person, uh, which is honestly most persons, then uh, there is a good chance that you will not be able to do your forward turn strat and have to improvise somewhat, assuming he doesn't outright kill somebody. But so far, so, so far, so good. Took a little bit of a turn there to just kind of heal up and uh, defend and let our Jin recover. Now it's another turn of setup, just making sure that uh, all of the Mercury Jin gets uh, put on standby again. It's another shade turn, so that makes it a little bit safer because you get protection from shade. And then on the next turn, we're gonna try and finish him off. Ooh, unfortunately, getting the stun on uh, Felix there, but the judgment on Jenna should still be enough damage in order to finish him off. Nice. Lucky enough to get a resistance drop from Sour as well, which is very much random, but very good. Which uh, definitely made it so that uh, Felix getting stunned at the end was extra, not a problem. Not exactly a textbook fight, but uh, a good Avaman in regards. But we're making his way through Ankle Ruins. Probably hoping he's going to get some higher level encounters there, because uh, just a single dino is not going to get you very far.
I definitely think Bowie's doing a lot better on levels than Plexa, though. I mean, I, I would hope so. Uh, but after all of those salamanders that Plexa got, he very much got behind very early on. <laughs> Though admittedly, he did was able to switch to Flea Shreds and Akarok at a pretty decent time still, so... Yeah, true. Not so... Yeah, I guess uh, just some bad... Some bad luck and some diary on the encounters. And there's always the point where you're wishing, just like, oh, if only I would have taken those ex uh, attacks first encounters, then I wouldn't have to take extra encounters now. But yeah, you can't, you can't know that in advance. You're just kind of banking on the attacks first paying off. Nice little nice clip. We get the, the little sand clip thing perfectly. Indeed. Easy. Turning a otherwise bit of a slog of a dungeon into a nice short dungeon. And Plexa is giving all of the Trident Prong pieces to Obaba, getting his Trident Forged. And, thanks, uh, Obaba. Thanks, Obaba. And this is always the moments where you realize, oh no, I forgot the Tandaria prong. <laughs> yep, it's not a great feeling. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so even when you're entirely sure, you're always just kind of sitting there. It's like, I, I, I have three prongs, right? Please tell me I have three prongs. <laughs> just kind of floating there menacingly. Alexa healing up with Jenna, since Jenna is not going to need opportunity points for the fight coming up. And it seems that Flexa does need an extra ex encounter for the uh, for Pierce to hit level 22. Let's hope it's just one, because he's probably only going to get one naturally on the way over. I am... Uh... I'm very curious to see if he's going to get a B. Single B. Because <laughs> I don't think that's going to be an experience, but maybe it is. I'm not, not entirely sure how far away he is. Um, I, I guess I was up in a way, but uh, just just mention, it's just, it, maybe Sid already mentioned it, but Bowie's moving diagonally in the sand because it's it's faster movement. I had not, actually. Thank you. Just a little, little bit faster, but every little bit counts. All right, Bowie coming up on the final boss. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh. Did Sweet. we call that first try? Or was that second try? No, that, that's first try. That first right, little bit of movement that was try. set up. <laughs> Alexa did actually get two encounters on his way to the Sea of Time, but he only needed a single one. Nice. Yep. And yay, it's the Sea of Time. So we're taking really specific routes through here. Um, everything's planned. And... The, 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 we're circling the volcanoes here. There's like a spot on the side of them that is kind of like a reset point for your quote unquote like volcano counter. That's why you're going to see. I think it's the next one he's going to, Plex is going to be doing it. So we'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye out on that. But <clears throat> you want to be, and you want to be, you want, you want the, the C to stop at a very specific time, especially on this one, because we're going to try to, try to cross down to the bottom left. So like if, if if we were to get stopped up at the very top, like up the up the top there, you can see how close Flix has just made it in and the sea starts up again. So if you're too far away, you're not gonna make those those uh, timings. So it's pretty particular. Yeah, but we actually make it up some time since he did not have to grind for extra encounters. Yeah, Bowie's saying he he just golded Ankle by twenty seconds, so that's yeah, that's you love to see crazy. that. I have to see it. 
Plex is kind of borking the, the volcano movement here. He's going to have to go around again. Yeah, this one is very, very uh, there we go. precise in particular. Yeah. But he, he made it through. You do not want to get caught in between there. Oh, no. You, you not only <laughs> get thrown out to the start of the dungeon, you even get a cutscene of shame to <laughs> eat us some extra time safe. <laughs> Sea of not a whole lot of time. Okay then. And with that, it's time. It's time yeah, for Poseidon. Surely Plex is gonna remember to save, right? After his menu. I would hope so. Uh, well, let, I'm sure he will. Yeah, this 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 guy can be a killer for sure. Yeah. Poseidon uh, has some very lovely moves, uh, the biggest one of which is a nice move called Watery Grave. It hits all of your party members and it can proc an insta-death on every single one of them. Which can prevent one of them from, you know, getting hit by, the, uh, by that proc just by having the uh, festival code on them to boost their luck stat. But that's still a lot of party wipes that can happen and uh, it's, it, you know, it, it's not a guarantee. Aside from that, there's just some very hard-hitting moves, and then there's Ocean Fist right here, which can bring you to 1 HP if it procs. Uh, fortunately not. The best part about Ocean Fist is that it's not Watery Grave, and that's about it. That's about it. Ocean Fist can be real sketchy, too. Yeah, even without the proc, it does a boatload of damage on that single target, so if he tends to target repeatedly a, a character with that, then yeah, they're pretty much going to be gone. Um, but anyway, the strat here uh, is essentially to start off with the Tridents to remove Poseidon's uh, force field. After that, drop a nice meteor on his head in order to uh, do some damage. He is weak to Mars after all, and uh, to boost Jenna's firepower. And now we hope that throughout this fight, Jenna does not die a single time. As soon as she dies, she loses that elemental boost that she got from a meteor, which means that her later uh, meteors uh, will do less damage. And as far as survivability goes, we got Pierce healing, and um, we also have Shade. We're, we're semi-cycling through Shade as well. Yep, yep. At some point, if you want to make sure that a character survives for the next turn to get their attack off, we also have Haze available. Um, Haze is unfortunately on Jenna, so it would be hard to She can't really use that on herself, but we also need Shiba to get a Thor off later, so that can be a very crucial moment. Uh, getting good luck on the attack so far. Also getting a nice reflux uh, counter attack in there. And just kind of building up to that Thor and building up to that uh, Meteor again. So throwing some attacks in there in between with, uh, with Felix. I'm, I'm going to try to get on Bowie's uh, <clears throat> fight as well, so yeah. maybe we can go in between, like back and forth here a little bit. Sounds good. Ooh, what are we going for Flexa? Let's see what we're going to... Goes. Nice, no procs. No procs. <laughs> no procs. On a shade turn too, so it didn't do a lot of uh, a lot of damage. Are we going in with the same strat? Gonna hope for the sleep. Does he get it? Ah. Yeah, no sleepy like no man sleep. there. No sleepy man there's today. Alexa not having Jenna die, which is nice because she gets the, like you were saying before, the boosted uh, meteor. Indeed, indeed. The nice thing about Haze is also that it's a priority move, so Jenna can be faster than, uh, than Shiba in that one instance, just so that she can prepare it. And that Ocean Fist was actually targeted perfectly onto Felix, who was protected by Haze. Well, that is indeed, great. Person. GG. That, that was that was a good Poseidon fight. Uh, and any fight where you don't have deaths is, is a good Poseidon fight, TBH. <laughs> now, hopefully Bowie doesn't see any... Um, um, what's the stun move called again? Heat stun. Heat stun. Yeah. So far, so good. Yep. Yeah, going into the last turn, he should be fine. Oh, yeah. He's nice and set up for a kill on Evermender here. Actually, pretty smart for uh, 
Plexa to just use Haze on his very damaged Felix at the end there, just because Felix was already, you know, a bit low in experience thanks to everything that's happened thus far. And we do need Felix to, you know, it's not a hard requirement, but it makes the Moaba fights uh, <laughs> a lot nicer if he does have enough levels. The stat check fight. Yeah. But we making it through, Avamander just fine. No sleep, but neither runner got sleep anyway, so mm -hmm. no time lost. And Plexa heading Plexa into the yeah. ship to get the Mist Potion, which is also for Moapa. Uh, yeah, we have our first biggest problem out of the way in Poseidon, but um, we have another big problem in Moapa, who just hits like an absolute truck. That is that is his that is his gimmick. He does a lot of damage, and uh, as a result, that Mist Potion is not for safety. It is straight up required in the Moapa fight. There you have it. Cutscene world. <clears throat> Cutscene world. <laughs> Lemuria, the, the the island of cutscenes. And you know what? It's perfect, though, because Bowie's, Bowie's kind of getting through the post Avamander cutscenes anyway, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, welcome to Lemuria, where people talk. There's a lot of old men here. People are very old in Lemuria, and old mm -hmm. people in Golden Sun games talk a lot. <laughs> Not all of them look old, but trust me, they're old. Can't fool me. Yeah, you see the guy with the gray white hair there? No, nah, yeah, not the oldest one on screen right now. Nope. And another nice instance of uh, Mercury Adams being uh, very impressed by you casting move on something. True. This is true. They like hands here in Lemuria. They, they they just like their quiet life here. <laughs> you know, this is actually perfect because we're we're not going to really have anything to talk about um, while Bowie's doing uh, uh, Sea of Time slash Poseidon because Blex is just in cutscenes, so. <laughs> For, for a little bit. Oh yeah, for sure. Be nice and easy to keep track of Bowie. <sighs> the one inter interesting thing Plex is going to be doing in here is just grabbing uh, Eclipse from the minigame here. So all the way back in the uh, reverse Yumpy Desert travel from Ares Rock to Alhafra, he actually grabs a... Uh, Lucky medal from Out of Bounds, a chest that was just off screen. And invisible. Wow, Plex is so good. He got it first try. Oh my god. So we we actually just enter the screen, drop the water immediately, and then we just wait on the crab in the back to be at a certain spot on the circle. And it's like a nice little visual cue. You, you pretty much always get it unless you're really not paying attention. <laughs> or, you, or you're like really early or late. But you should be fine. Nice and easy. Mm -hmm. And the first time you throw that uh, metal in the center, it is always Eclipse. Other than that, whatever you get from that fountain is completely random. Um, there used to be a time where we sometimes threw a second metal to try and fish for a uh, wild coat. But uh, since then we have moved on to flea strats in, western, uh, in, in the western sea instead. Everybody so, loves those, so oh, gotta yeah. gotta cram in more fleas. Oh, that is the that is the scariest section of fleas, honestly. Ooh, yeah. That one is really only barely faster. <laughs> yeah. And there's some hard hitting hard hitting boys in the Western Sea. I still find fleeing in Kimbombo Mountains scarier. Kimbombo, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> All right, Bowie getting two encounters as well, heading over to the Sea of Time. This oh, first volcano is actually nice and easy. You just got to go up into that right corner there and away you go. Yeah. Some of the later ones, that's ooh, a bit tricky. Whoa! Whoa, that was <laughs> smooth movement on Bowie's end right there. <laughs> What's the, uh, uh, what's that song? The one with the, uh, 
It's like the the manga with the with the noodle boy in the car. Anyway, Bowie just went real fast right there. Deja vu. Ah, oh, right, right, That's right. The <laughs> Straight up drifting through those things, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Bowie with so much swag, it's dripping off of him. Uh, Opts in to play it safe from these right here. Okay, okay. Eh, it's it's fine. I, I, oh, I he spooked me. I thought he, I thought he messed it. I thought he was gonna have to do it all over again. No, that's the intentional method. Okay. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, intentional. Who who knows? What they wanted us to do right. <laughs> exactly. All right, just barely managed to make that one work as well. Making up that time. Next up, progressing to the next part of Cutscene City. Pierce getting some unfortunate news. Gonna give that boy a little bit of time. Now mm -hmm. Bowie once again setting up for Poseidon as well. Getting all his gin in the right places. Looks like getting a little debated there, but it's alright. He's made it into the next section of the cutscene. <laughs> Uh, Piers' dad apparently really likes bowling, I guess. Uh, yeah, those, those are definitely bowling pins, for sure. Yeah. Big fan of bowling. Best of luck to Bowie here. In the good, he's pushing the trident. That's always a good thing to do. Very, yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep, glad he is. got that okay. one. Safety safe. Always a good there idea. Here we go. And Poseidon time. Alright, starting off with the Meteor, the Trident, the Wish Well, and an impact on Felix, just to get a little bit of extra damage on him. That impact damage does also boost the amount of damage the Trident does, it is considered a physical attack. Um, but it's also just nice since we are going to be fishing for some Megidos at some point, which could be nice for some backup damage. There's some stray damage that you want in between the summons. Uh, especially if Jenna ends up dying at any point. Hopefully, though, uh, should not be too bad. Let's see. Jenna's a little bit low. Hopefully, the shade damage will be fine enough. Oh, yep, there ah, she goes. That's... Shade, shade cannot protect you shade from the target like... oh. ocean fist. Oh. Well, shade can be cycled, but not not very optimally. Yeah. Right. So he's gonna throw the. He's. This is why he. This is why we put the uh, water of life on Felix so that uh, Piers can still heal while getting a revive on. All right. So she's back up. Did unfortunately lose the boost from the first meteor though. So ah, that targeting. That is, that is gonna be slow. So yeah, very much going off script for uh, for Bowie here, trying to improvise. What's yeah, this is this is probably a good call using the Mercury there. I mean, he's he's got to. You don't. I mean, I I guess you don't need shade to be up, but you definitely like having shade up every once in a while. Exactly. Man, okay. he really has it out for Jenna. Uh, yeah. Hopefully you have the breath. We have the so, breath. Oh, he opted for the wheeze, though. Playing, playing risky. He, he's going to be missing out on uh, the, the boosted meteor damage, so he's, I'm sure he's keeping that in mind. Mm -hmm. Can need to do some extra, uh, especially now that you're also getting a ply well. Really, you really, would really like a uh, Megiddo at this point in time. Another Ocean Fist. Yeah, you can see. Ooh, there's the proc. <laughs> you can see Ocean Fist does not mess around. Oh, you know, nice ooh, good. It's not. It's not. Um... It's, oh. it's not watery grave. Yay! Watery grave. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Woohoo! Oh, hold on. There ocean Fist is actually been the bigger killer here. Oh yeah, Wishwell is really good. Can just get Felix right back up on this feed. In total, it, all in all, this this hopefully is only going to be like another extra turn or two, but... Alright, 
trying to get the Thor off right now, and uh, maybe you have to get a little bit of extra damage after that. Just trying to keep Felix alive, since Felix, you know, does still have the Soul Blade, does still hit pretty hard. But the Thor was enough to kill. Nice, nice. One death. Oh, a little bit of a slower fight, but got through Poseidon. We in there. <laughs> Last boss down. <laughs> yeah. Really now just to do the, the remaining side bosses. Yep. <laughs> and as they are both heading into Lemuria, and Plex is still going to be here for a little bit, so I think I'm going to take another little bathroom break. I suggest the rest... Uh, you either get up, stretch your legs, get something to drink. We're still here for a long time. There's one more uh, game after this, so do make you sure you take care of yourself. Be right back. Ocean man, take me by the hand, don't kill my run <clears throat> uh, well Plex is just finishing up on uh, cutscene world here Bowie's entering as well grabbing the, grabbing the mist potion you don't want to forget that you're going to have a bad time in Moapa I forgot to make a joke about soup and croissants during the map section, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, make it up in, when Bowie gets there. Now, if anyone's wondering what's going on in the story here, well, we arrive here um, to... Disneyland, cutscene land, and um, everyone's like, hey, Piers, what's up, man? You've been gone for a long time. And Piers is like, ah, man, I have been gone for a long time. Look at this place. And then we spend the next, you know, 10, 15 minutes being like, um, geez, sorry, Piers, but we gotta go, man. <laughs> I hope my uh, I hope my story knowledge is up to par. It is definitely not. I have uh, I have actually not played this game casually. <laughs> Don't usually want to admit something like that, but wow! You see that chest in front of Felix on Plex the side? That is the only reason we're here. I can't remember the name of the old man, but we get chewed out pretty hard. Anyway, we get it. We get the grindstone and just leave. I suppose. I suppose there are other reasons why we're here, like uh, like grabbing uh, eclipse, but. Right. So Bowie's done his first leg of the cutscene gauntlet uh they're gonna bowie and plex are gonna high five here on the way out nice team team uh good good team uh not teamwork but we're all friends here folks team spirit Yo, I'm back in time to see them bullying Pierce. Let's go. You missed the high five. Oh, I missed the high five. That's yep. a shame. They pass each other. One set of cutscenes away from each other. Are we grabbing his tablet? Um. It's, a, it's an iPad. You learn how to use Eclipse through it. Yeah, you just Google it. Just has a nice app over there. and just like summon Eclipse. Oh, yep. I could usually use <laughs> yeah. Eclipse right about now. And uh, that is going to carry us through some uh, the boss fights for the rest of the game, really. Really good summon. It is one of the more unique summons. It actually requires a mix of gin. So it requires three Jupiter and two Mercury. Which is also part of the reason why I've been... We want as many Jupiter Gin as we can get. <laughs> it's 
Sorry. Oh, yeah, uh, it's funny about Plexi just going straight down there. <laughs> There's not really a whole lot we're worried about in Lemuria, but you do want to say no to to this chooser. And yeah. Yep. Save them text boxes. <laughs> yep. Those are, it's ten whole. Th I didn't know it was that many. It's a lot. I um. I'm not entirely sure how many actually. Save them text boxes. See. And Plex does not making his way over to the Western Sea. Still gonna get a few encounters here, but he could just run away from those. The sea. They're the same old sea encounters, they do not scale with your level, so. Use that prime time to be able to flee from them. And the uh, fleeing is going to be the name of the game for a little while again. Yep. Which can be quite scary. Gin hunt. Oh yeah. Uh, yes. Fortunately, the next couple of djinn that we're going to run into, if they choose to flee, not a big deal. Oh yeah, they're going to be djinn that are in the wild. and uh, We're going to be getting chill, which is a mercury djinn, and basically just serves as summon food. Um, we need him to summon Eclipse more. And uh, also we're going to be getting Petra, which uh, acts essentially the same way as Ground does in um, Golosan 1 where you can just prevent an uh, enemy's move from happening at all. It is a priority yeah. gym, happens at the start of the turn, and then just immobilizes one of their turns. You know what would be great, Sid? Hmm. Is if we had Petra and Ground. That would be amazing. Uh, how overpowered would that be? Very. If you chain that together properly, ooh. Perhaps we'll get lucky and get ground in our uh, Golden Sun one gin. That would be nice. Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed. Actually got an attacks first here on Jill. <laughs> Excuse me. Not really necessary. Jill is actually in the part of the continent that is still considered pretty early on, so he is rather weak. Uh, he's essentially below where uh, Kiboma Mountains and the Ripway are and, same, and stuff like that. So Chio is a pretty easy pickup. Petra can be a little scarier and likes to run away more. But it's a gin that's in the wild, so that helps. Imagine if we get Flash as well. Oh, now, you're, now you're just asking for too much future. That Can't get that lucky, quote unquote lucky. So yeah, I expect to see some deaths in trying to run away. These these monsters do hit like absolute trucks, but it, it, your survival odds are very much high enough that it should not be that big of a deal. And we have full access to revive here, so deaths do not mean as much anymore. Nice attacks first from this very scary dirge. <laughs> Singular dirge. Alexa ramming the boat into the uh, rocks uh, quite aggressively here. He really wants to make this a land boat. <laughs> yeah, trying to minimize those encounters as much as possible whenever it is not that much slower to just kind of hook the, the cliffs. You know what would make make these turtles a lot cooler is if there was a was an anime girl riding on the back of them. An anime girl on the back of the turtle dragons. <clears throat> yeah. Sure. I feel like I've seen that somewhere before. Possibly. Narrate. <laughs> I guess you can call that a turtle dragon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I always. Yeah. I mean, it's a turtle, right? It's it's, it's turtle enough. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, I was really racking my brain there. Thanks for spoiling this. <laughs> I, 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 could tell. I was like, ah, oh, okay, okay, I got it. You. <laughs> <laughs> I won't leave you hanging. Oh, bless. Good summon, though, good summon. <laughs> Gets us to the one that shall not be named. Alright, here's Petra. Good boy, didn't run away. Can you use mud on Petra? Petra's probably like, mud, come on, bro. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> or he. Oh, okay, I guess, I guess it's. There he is. Yeah, yeah a bit, really a bit hurts. You can play it a little bit riskier and do a summon rush here on him to get a one turn, but again, the animations are rather slow, so it's not necessarily faster, and you uh, put. Uh, yourself at risk because you have a lot of gin on standby so you have way less health so it can kill you. It's generally just a better idea to take a two turn and just use mud on the first turn to make sure he doesn't get a second chance to run. And the nice thing about these rivers is that there is no encounters in the rivers. So. Yeah, very nice. Bucks are having a bit of a go trying to get off of his boat there. Didn't want to leave the, the sea life ah, cost him. So, we're just going to be fleeing through Shaman Cave. Um, it's. You don't want to die in here, I'll say that much. So, I don't know if Plexa plans on saving. I. I don't know. I, I, I'm just unreasonably afraid of this, of this little cave in here, but. I don't even know where you're going if you die. It's probably like, uh... It's all the way back to Lemuria. Ah, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you get a whole safe. party wipe, you're <laughs> safe. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, good call. I don't know if it was because I was psyched. Uh, maybe I psyched him out, I don't know. I, ho I hope I didn't, but... That's yep. a, a really sketchy area. But yeah, the problem with this cave is that your uh, synergy points actually do not regenerate in here, neither do your gin. Um, so it can be a little bit scary. There's some pretty hard hitting encounters in here as well. And they're the same ones as you will encounter on the overworld on your way to Jupiter Lighthouse. And yeah, they can hit like trucks. And, uh, the reason that you do not actually regain any synergy points in this cave is because they accidentally swapped the properties of Shaman Village and Shaman Village Cave. Uh, which, which is actually nice. It's very nice, because it also means that you cannot use retreats in Shaman Village Cave because it's considered a town. But since uh, Shaman Village is now considered a, 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 a dungeon, that means you can use retreat in it, which means we can now retreat glitch in the town. And a town has many doors, at boy. So... Um, we can very much warp all over the place. It's gonna look pretty wacky, but it's very good. It's gonna allow us to just grab um... Stinky. What's this one's name? <laughs> it's, it's called Aroma. <laughs> aroma. <laughs> it's it's Cannon I, I guess you can call him Stinky. His name is Aroma. <laughs> he has a certain aroma. <laughs> Oh lord. And look at that. The shaman's rod that was passed off from Conical to Plexa has just been it's just found its place. All we the, have to do to make the shaman's rod us. that I passed off to Bowie is battered and snapped in half and covered in duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would be surprised. They, they, they fell off a lighthouse, so I'm surprised it's still in good condition. <laughs> Uh. But yeah, they uh, they're, they're a little bit a little bit very old fashioned in this town. They do not like outsiders at all. They do not like women at all. So they do not believe that Sheba here is uh, actually the uh, the uh, gosh, what do you call it? The inheritor. Yeah, the chosen one would be able to actually be this powerful, so we have to prove it to them. She has to use the whirlwind on here, and after this, this whirlwind, they're going to be impressed for about a second before they go back to, no, but you're a woman, it can't be this way. And 
and then we just have to beat them in the fights and a race. Not very chill, Moaba. Not very not chill. Not very chill. Literally just sitting here is how's this little girl going to be better than us? And then we have that little girl stomp him into the ground by summoning a giant dragon. <laughs> hey, yeah, we're going to be uh, seeing our first use of Eclipse coming up soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, we finally make his way, making his way out of uh, Cutscene Disneyland. Um... Creighton's gonna do his best Santa Claus impersonation here. Ho 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 ho! He does have the hair color for it. Yeah. Yeah. Flex is actually gonna go into retreat mode again here for some some weird nonsense. And he's actually not even going to cause a screen transition himself this time. It's actually these two dudes who are about to give a tutorial of Trial Road who do it Thanks, for him. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Which means that we can skip the entire rest of the tutorial. Uh, we do not need a tutorial. We already did Colosso. We know how this works. It is Colosso 2.0. Except this time, you also have to uh, put some items after every puzzle. So you have to like essentially remove some of your gear. You will get it back afterwards, don't worry. But uh, we're just going to put some stuff that we don't need in there, basically. We are... Uh, well, our weapons. Who needs weapons? Nobody needs weapons. We're going to put our weapons in there. And uh, maybe one piece of armor on Pierce. He's tanky enough. For the most part, we want to keep our, our armor in check. Um, these puzzles are the last puzzle uh, that is based on the name. So uh, the characters add up to a certain value. That determines which uh, puzzle set of puzzles you will get on Trial Road. And this is the most important one. Because here you have to make sure that you get the set of fastest... Uh, puzzles and it doesn't really matter that much which side technically the left side is a tiny bit faster but the other puzzles uh, with this particular name just end up being uh, a bunch faster as well you get a faster guy on maze so that's why it's important so that's why he's absolutely blazing through here we actually manipulated the game into giving us the fastest set of puzzles and, uh, yeah we're we're, placed, we're faced with some pretty simple puzzles thanks to it and uh, we only have to, since we're always finishing first in a room, we uh, only have to give one item into the chest. If you're slower than Moapa, you have to do two items, but no big deal. This boss fight coming up is going to be pretty funny, because uh, by the end of it, nobody's going to have a weapon. So everybody will just be standing there without weapons, facing up against this uh, massive man. Setting up the Jinn a bit to make sure that we can cast as many Eclipses as possible. This Eclipse is going to do a boatload of damage. And uh, might as well drop some of this other stuff. The Soul Blade don't need it. Thor Crown don't need it. The, the War Gloves don't need it. Psy Crystal, we, we don't need any of that. We're just going to drop it on the ground. We do not need it. The rest of the game, it's fine. Who needs any of it? Exactly. We're gonna style on these guys as much as we possibly can. Yeah, in reality, very dangerous fight. Uh, on turn one, we're actually gonna use a Mist Potion so that by the end of it, we are back up to full health. And, which is despite the fact that this is a Shade turn. But yeah, they have these Bramble Seeds, which do a boatload of damage. And um, in order. They're all three still alive here, and we'd be essentially in the next turns. We want to make sure that they're not alive by either using, uh, by either killing them before they can do their attacks or using Petra to defend it. Uh, Eclipse here is going to do most of the firepower, but we have a meteor and a judgment as well. And uh, this Petra is going to prevent Moapa from doing anything because otherwise he might, uh, you know, do some serious damage. And this knight on the left is going to die before he can do any fights. And the reason he's slower is because we used Mud last turn to lower their agility. And uh, there's another Eclipse to hopefully finish off that one knight. There we go. So in this turn, only the other knight gets a, uh, gets a turn. Yeah, these all, the, the the lads, the ads here. The lads. The lads. <laughs> it works, I guess. <laughs> they have... Um, they have uh, synergy items which deal tons of damage, but we having a really rough go on this. Oh no! 
Okay, okay, okay. He can still get away. Bowie, please don't die. Okay. Ooh. That was very scary on Bowie's end. I Holy. <laughs> I was, just, I was just gonna say, Bowie had an excellent chill, by the way. He, like, got the encounter immediately, but okay. Well, that, that was. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, Bowie making a safe to save after that one. Just... If, if he dies there, he goes all the way back to Lemuria. Yeah. And Pier, uh, Pier's yeah. dying on the last turn there with Moapo. Not a big deal, as long as you have someone alive to yeah. eclipse them, them to death. So. Exactly. Um, experience at this point is not going to be important anymore. We're going to get the reunion party, which are going to be higher level than us anyway. Uh, so really what matters is that Shiba manage, is alive on the final turn so that she can get one last Eclipse off and nobody dying before that last turn. Bowie just getting <laughs> hammered on these encounters. Oh yeah, he is not having a good time in the Western Z right now. Ooh. Now, all of our Jin are uh, currently on cooldown after that intense fight of very many summoning, but fortunately we have this very long river where there's no encounters and we can just uh, have all of our Jin recover by the time we get to the end of the river. So that nice the little breather. Actual, yeah, the actual encounters then are pretty good. And uh, I, I'm hoping that the audio is on Plexa right now because this is my absolute. That was an absolute jam on the Oh my goodness, we're getting another high five. We are getting another high five. Let's go. There it is. <laughs> Beautiful. Two high fives in one round. All right. In case anybody is worried, uh, any items that you drop or put in the chest uh, during the trial road, you do get back. That is why everybody has their weapons back, including Felix. Yeah, we blade. just went along with the joke and didn't really explain it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, don't worry about that. But since we did drop it on the ground at some point, we did trigger the game system where if you drop an artifact, so a special weapon or special piece of armor on the ground, then it will go into the artifacts menu in the shop. That includes if you drop it within Trial Road. So right now, waiting for us in a shop somewhere is a Soul Blade, uh, a Psy Crystal, a Thorn Crown, and War Gloves, which means we're going to have two of each of those. We and, effectively uh, duped them. Exactly. It's very nice. And then because Trial Road is nice, it gave us back all of the items we dropped after it anyway. And yeah, since that fight is essentially just use summons for damage and nothing else, uh, yeah, that's uh, we don't really need weapons. The attack stat does not matter whatsoever for summons. Ooh, one more, one more encounter for Plexa there, right before he gets to the dock. Oh, he taking the save as well. Oh yeah, smart, respectable. <clears throat> oh yeah. Now Plexa actually entered the Ateca Inlet right here in a very particular way. He made sure that his uh, boat was very much at the very right of the dock in a way where he can uh, in future reach it uh, just by jumping into the boat from land rather than having to go to the Ateca Inlet. Which is good because on our next visit to Ateca Inlet, uh, Master Hama is there waiting for us with a long cutscene, which you don't want. Are we making it out of his encounter just fine? Usually only getting one in there, so... Yeah, there's a very small chance of you getting a second one, but once you get through this room, you're, you're in the clear. And the Plex are getting yet another gin. Our gin collecting has not ended. Uh, this is Salt, the, uh, the truest of speedrunning gin. Nothing like a good bit of salt in your speedrun streams. My favorite. Yeah. And uh, he's actually going for a particular menu, because we now have enough gin where we can have six gin on one of our party members, and that party member is going to be Felix. We are going to give him uh, three um, uh, Mars gin and three Jupiter gin, which in combination with his own inherent, uh, 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 let's see, Venus elements gives him now a three element setup. 
of level 3, essentially. Which gives him access to the ninja class, and the ninja class has just an absolutely insane attack stat. It has a really good area of effect damage called Shuriken, which sta uh, stacks with your attack power, uh, which means that you it stacks with the Soul Blade's attack power. And um, it does equal damage to everything you target. Normally, area of effect damage kind of like gets less in power the further away from the center you get. Shuriken does full damage to all of the targets. So with that, uh, he is now going to make a quick work of everything in Jupiter Lighthouse. Not busted at all. Oh yeah, not busted <laughs> at all. Not to mention it's a really fast uh, uh, class as well, because you're a ninja, so he's going to outspeed a lot of things. Oh, gonna... he missed the escape. So, so these uh, scorpions in here—if you get two or three of them, you can just flee from them. That your your flee chance is outrageously high. If you have th three, I'm pretty sure it's like a hundred percent. Correct. Uh, two is like what, probably seventies, eighties, uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little unfortunate he didn't get the flee, but yeah, that is that is the play. And uh, the way that works with the Devil Scorpions is that their name is actually too long. So uh, whenever you, whenever there's multiple Devil Scorpions, they normally get a number after it. But since their name is so long, that number actually exceeds the name limit, which means that the number is now actually put in a different piece of data, and that piece of data happens to be their level, which means that um, Devil uh, Scorpion 2 is now level 2 monster, which means that it will okay. significantly increase your chance that you can run from it. So if there's a, And again, if there is a second uh, or, or third Devil Scorpion, um, it is actually a 100% chance because you have a level 2 and a level 3 monster just dragging down the average of the encounter level to the point where you're guaranteed a oh, level 0 apparently since it overrides it entirely that's even better spaghetti gold Bowie's setting up over here for the tutorial skip the trial road. And Plexa is doing everybody's favorite well, was doing everybody's favorite puzzle in Jupiter Lighthouse. We're gonna be seeing uh, plenty of that one. So yeah, going to be fighting everything in Jupiter Lighthouse for as much as we can, um, except for when we have those Devil Scorpions, in which case, when there's multiple, we can just run away. And there's also a an, an party option where you get like one Maze Still uh, with two Devil Scorpions, in which case the Maze Still does you know, drive the party average up quite a bit again, uh, which means that you only have like a 50% chance of running, but that is still very much worth it. Sadly, Jupiter Lighthouse is the only place where we can encounter these Devil Scorpions and get away with this. And for the rest, there is uh, Clay Spire and Planet Diver alongside Felix's Shurikens and Death Plunges. This is also why we got a better stat stick for Jenna and the Angelic Ankh, which we bought all the way in Apogee Islands. Um, if she has just a slightly more powerful Planet Diver, there's some stuff that we can kill that we otherwise would have to take an extra turn to kill. But we yeah, are making us win. Pleasantly, deceptively strong. It's oh nice. yeah, it's a good ability. It's one of those synergies that actually uh, calculates your attack stat in it as well. And it is Mars, which helps against the blue dragons, because the blue dragons are awful Mercury things. Funnily enough, most things in Jupiter Lighthouse are actually weak to Jupiter. Except for the blue dragons. So Bowie's gonna drop his stuff, exact same thing, effectively duping them. And he's gonna hope he doesn't get bombed by uh, synergy items. 
There is a small chance that he can kill somebody here. <laughs> what is it? Strong hit as well that oh, the yeah. uh, ads do. Yeah, he really. Yeah. They really need to target the one particular person now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one, there's the crystal powder. Thankfully, we're, we're under shade on the first turn, so it's not really doing a whole lot there. Okay, the whole gang came out to play. Holy moly. Oh, yeah. That is why Mist Potion is picked up. For sure. Get yourself right back up to full after that turn. Yep, turns out Eclipse is good. Eclipse putting in hella work. There you have it, there's one. And there's just one more turn at the end there. Finished them off. Looks like Bowie. Is yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't have breath up. Manual. He doesn't have breath up. So this is gonna be improvisation city. Maybe he forgot to tap his gin because in the Boapa menu you do tap your gin so that you get them back at the correct time. All right, Felix, Felix down is fine. It's, it's not no biggie. And fair, Bowie fair just, enough. yeah, Bowie just opts in to go f back yeah. to his safe. So make sure he can get through it. That is very unfortunate. Yeah, he must not have exited the menu before setting. Or wait, was his trade wrong? No, he had breath on peers. Just making sure his menu is correct here. Doing some taps, setting. Ooh. Hoping he does have his notes up as a backup, because I know that recently he's been trying to get entirely off notes. But, uh, yeah, yeah, a situation uh, like this where you're not sure what went wrong, it's good to have them as backup. Yeah, for sure. Just to. It's definitely a commendable thing. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. He didn't stand by at the start of the menu. Right. Looks like doing a little bit of a small skip there, just. Uh, Skipping a wind cycle, we're going a little bit further. Looks also um, getting a uh, wyvern, which I uh, don't quite like to see them myself. But no, they are pretty much a guaranteed uh, two-turn encounter. So actually I'm going to put Felix back into his normal class here just so that he can use Cure to drain his synergy points. There's going to be another retreat glitch coming up. Was... What, breath must not have been... I'm not entirely... I'm not... de-rusted enough to know what is going wrong with his menu right here. All I know is that it's very unfortunate.
I don't think he is tapping the Jupiter Chin, but I'm not entirely sure if that is... Hmm. I'm not sure if that's still part of the strat here, that's the thing. Because I have never had the setup where I did uh, flea strats in... In the, western, in the western sea, so his gin menu is looking a little bit different than mine. And where people are. Yeah, I think it... It sounds like it's... He, he's standbying too early, I guess. Gotcha, gotcha. Looks like getting ready for his uh, retreat glitch here soon. Yeah, a lot of these. Yeah, we can make are... the menus look easy a lot of the time, but they are—they're very specific, and one thing wrong with the menu will completely throw everything off. Oh yeah. <clears throat> He's getting through here now. Gonna be able to use the Eclipse on the next turn and should be fine. Yeah. Got a death Ooh. on Jetta there, but you know, pe people die on that turn. It, it happens. <clears throat> yeah. Everybody gets revived after anyway. Exactly. You get a free revive. So, uh, Plexa actually went into a retreat glitch and then went down a hole. And you might think, well, all that did was put him back at the start of the dungeon. Could he not have just retreated back? And it's like, yeah, he could have. Um, the effects of that retreat glitch are actually not going to play in a, a effects until later on in the dungeon. Um, because those particular tiles where you fall through the floor, they actually also save your coordinates of where you are supposed to fall. And those coordinates and where you're, you're supposed to land uh, are gonna then come into play as soon as he next enters a room that you can fall into. So in the right tower, there is also a place where you have those little platforms that you can fall through to get back into another chamber. And as soon as he enters that chamber, he is going to fall at the coordinates that he was supposed to, but then in that room, which happens to play as a about. Gonna go say hi to a uh, to a gin right here. No idea. I haven't got what the name of this gin is. Haven't gotten them in too long. I also don't know. No. <laughs> but he's just kind of chilling in this room. And uh, since we would have to do uh, the puzzle over to particularly get that gin, it's not worth it. Despite the fact that it's a Jupiter gin, it just takes too long. And now we're in the puzzle room that just drags on forever. Yeah, I was just thinking about mentioning, like, Jupiter Lighthouse is a pretty fun lighthouse, but at the same time, there are a few rooms that are just... Uh... Particularly in this, this is one of them. <laughs> Yeah. This and the a lot of pushing puzzle. these blocks around. Oh, yeah.
And Bill will be making his trek up into a tech in load as well. Parking oh, his boat good. in the correct spot. Looking yep. good. Hmm. I noticed a wing on the beach there. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> Could that be foreshadowing? Hoomst? Hoomst? Oh, I guess couldst. <laughs> <laughs> and then here we go. Blexa yeah. has the uh, fall coordinates. Oh, he good. He got it. That is, that is very bad if you enter the wrong out-of-bounds door there. It's actually far more precise there. There are so many doors in that particular area and you could just end up at the completely wrong one, but Lexa got it. And then uh, managed to skip two puzzle rooms with it. One of which being a very slow one where you're just in hover mode the entire time, moving at snail's pace. Are we coming up to a big menu, so... The second biggest, or is Reunion larger? I, I don't... I think the reunion, I think reunion might be a little, little yeah. bigger. Although it is admittedly a bit smaller because we've we already do part of the ninja setup here. Uh, I don't know which one's bigger anymore. The pre Doom Dragon menu is also pretty big. Yeah. And so now Plexa can just run uh, straight up to the uh, to the end here. Yep. Yeah, unfortunately, this puzzle with cuts. permanently solved, so you gotta do it every time you come through the room. Oh yeah, we love the puzzles so much, we do it three times. <laughs> and there is a route through the dungeon where you only do it two times, but then in that route you're particularly more likely to get more encounters. So, uh, it's really only done in uh, RNG minips. Uh, categories. Yeah, some familiar faces. Familiar places. Who could that possibly be? Oh my goodness, look. Garrett, Damn. what kind of pr problematic position have you got Mia in? Come on, dude. Terrible friend. <sighs> Garrett, man, every it time. It has to be Garrett's fault. Always Garrett. Oh yeah, look what you... Okay, yeah. Congrats, Garrett. Here comes trouble. Thanks, Garrett. It's actually Mia's fault, but... It's more fun to blame Garrett. It's always Garrett's fault. Bowie getting away from some scorpions. There we go. That, that helps. Yeah, I actually did not see too many scorpion encounters. On mm, I time. think it was... I, don't, I only noticed the, the first one there that we commented on. But I was admittedly distracted by Moapa. Yeah. So we're taking his first rundown of the, the pipe puzzle. Oh, speaking of. Oh, that, speaking of. <laughs> some scorpions right there. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, not quite enough Devil Scorpions for Bowie there. Gonna have to fight Yeah, himself. also the uh, Mace Tails take a little bit of extra damage too, so... Oh yeah, a little bit tankier. 
Not pretty bad, though. Alex being a good sport, healing everybody up. This is actually what we don't want here. Yeah, what, what, what do people say? The, the most, world's most inconvenient heal? Plexa doing a mind read for the fans. of talking going on here until they eventually go up and decide to beat us up. He's, he's actually going where Bowie's going right now, and right there, the airy. Look at that. Not quite a high five, but close. Close enough. You have to do so many loops around this place, there's definitely opportunities for high fives. Right, so Bowie's activated Jupiter. Probably... Probably about the same, 10, 11-ish minutes apart still, for anyone who's wondering. Um, actually, no. Um, maybe more like 13, 14 Yeah, hours. I think that Moapa set him yeah. back for a few minutes. Is just doing a little bit of a victory lap around here. You just have to cross back over and up onto the area again just to yep. kind of have your meeting with Agashi mm -hmm. Unkar. And we, do, we did have another high five. We had a high five in the red key room. I missed it. Well, good luck, Plexa. It's a hard fight, but, uh, you know, you, you, you can get through it. It's just, it takes... Take some good luck. Nah, he's got this. It's not going to be very interesting. I'm mostly going to just focus on Bowie's screen right here. He's starting to too. Lex is too good. Two versus two. Here in the first couple turns. So let's see if he can survive through it. I'm more interested in the puzzle Bowie's doing to be edge. <laughs> Best puzzle, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Love it. key down this is what i mean with jupiter it, it, it like there's a lot going on but it's like oh it just drags and drags it's now that you're visiting the same areas over and over so yeah. you're like oh i have to go out here get the red key then i have to go through the same parts to get to the red door and go... Ooh, rising dragon a lot of damage maybe he can get an eclipse out Ooh, ooh. no no eclipse for plexa Oh, well, that's all right. He's got Jenna. <laughs> She'll... Jenna can win this back. She's got this. Ooh, rough start for Jenna here. <laughs> not not so hot. Well, maybe Shiva can, can, can carry us. I believe Team Shiva. Maybe get a revive off or something. Uh, it's going for Meteor. Oh. We'll play, we'll play. Ah, Oof. Uh, well, too bad. So sad. Bowie oh, running up to get his second key. Hmm. Not really having any. Any major mistakes from Plexa thus far for Bowie to capitalize on either, unfortunately. Yeah. Being pretty consistent, and everything else has just kind of been within the margin of error that has called us on the last stage. 
win some time here, lose some time there. Yeah, the time loss uh, and time gain in, in the two games, the GBA games, are very interestingly different. Like, Golden Sun 1, you just look at your splits one second and you're a minute and a half ahead, and then you look at them two minutes later and you're five minutes behind somehow, which is not actually possible, but it's Golden Sun 1. <laughs> Golden Sun 2 is like you just, like you said, you kind of just like bleed time everywhere. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. But we arrive in the blue key, he can set up for the retreat warp himself as well afterwards. In the meantime, Plexa is heading out. Going to walk back and uh, get the reunion party. Which we'll get another nice big menu. Yeah, I hear a happy cat. Yeah, kitty cat wants the attention. <laughs> Flex a gearing up for a nice fat menu coming up here. But we enter in the right wing. Right wing's a little more chill. You don't have to worry so much about uh, PP, like preparing for any uh, retreat glitches and stuff at the top. It's honestly so chill that you almost want to fall asleep with some of those puzzles. Yeah. <laughs> and over on Plexus side, everybody is kissing and making up and everybody happy and let's go save the world together. Yay! Don't worry, guys, I'll be sure to give Punchy plenty of hugs from chat later. I'm seeing Punchy emotes. I'm working mm. on it. Ooh. <laughs> By which I mean I keep forgetting to work on it. Alright, nice menu there. It's getting Elda Jin set up for everybody. Uh, getting a, a mint on Isaac over there to be faster. Um, well, synergy getting, items as well. Oh yeah, bringing up synergy items over to the correct people. Mia wants um, Frost? Was it Frost? Douse? Yeah. Mia wants Frost or Douse and Garrett wants Lift. Garrett does indeed Lift. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Garrett lifts. That's about the only thing we're using him for. Yeah, he doesn't read though, that's for sure. So a matter of fact, later on, we're going to be absolutely robbing Garrett. <laughs> we, yeah. we are going to take all of his gear and sell it so that we can afford a second soul blade. <laughs> yeah, not actually yeah. bothering to uh, heal anybody up right here after these deaths. The deaths are actually very beneficial because we want to switch to the more powerful party, which is the Golden Sun 1 party, because they join your party at level 28. Dying is fast. Dying is fast. And yeah, now we have a flying ship. Holy moly. Foreshadowing anybody? We have wings. Flying ship in Golden Sun 3? <gasps> <laughs> we don't need a flying ship to get around in Golden Sun 3. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Plex is just uh, gonna make his way over to Magma Rock, where we're gonna get the last special synergy. We're gonna get Blaze, 
uh, which we'll need for Mars Lighthouse. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just going to be those last two dungeons, but they're pretty long. And uh, Magma Rock is another one of those places where at first we, we did try to fight stuff. And we got like Shine Plasma and stuff like that, Hill Prism. And uh, tried, to, tried to do stuff. And uh, yeah, it turns out that after recalculating, fleeing is faster. But in the meantime, a burst exists. A burst is really cool. It does not have a Z axis, so it, it <laughs> we can just use it to uh, blow up stuff that is directly above us. Not have to worry about it. Gonna be seeing that a whole bunch of times throughout this dungeon. And if that small one just now it was not enough for you, then don't worry, there will be another big example of the Burst Glitch coming up right here. Uh, we're actually keeping the second party um, dead for the time being, because in a little bit we're going to have to do a Retreat Glitch. And uh, Alright, here's the Burst Glitch. Come and get it very high up. Look at that. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, pretty much like pretty much trivializes Magma Rock. Oh yeah. Got another one right there. Then we have to do a little bit of menuing here just to get access to growth as well. Let's just set up some classes. Good. And a lot, of, a lot of these menus are also setting stuff up for later menus for Flame Dragons and for Doom Dragons. Uh, make sure that those menus are as small as possible. Okay, the Retreat Glitch that is coming up is going to be the only other instance where we're going to nice. be doing movements uh, completely blind in the rocks. But we're making it through the scary uh, Out of Bounds screen there as well. Very nice, good on Bowie. I always miss that. I really do. Yeah, I take a safety <laughs> pause, like when the screen lines up proper. <laughs> like, I don't mess with it. Ooh, it's scary. Was that an accidental retreat on Bowie's side, or am I just am I imagining things? Uh, no, he did actually need to retreat after getting through that tower. Um, he did not have to go back into the room for it, though. I'm pretty sure he could just retreat at the top. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I don't recognize this position for a retreat. Yeah. That's definitely what happened. Yeah, yeah there's game. there's stops of some towers in the game where your ability to retreat is locked, so that you have to move inside first to do it. So it can be it's easy to get them mixed up. Which, which ones you can and which ones you can't. And he's making his way into the cutscene. In the meantime, Plexa is making his way off screen. Goodbye, Felix. Goodbye. We might see you again at some point. Doing. Uh, more some more blind movement off screen by deloading the screen transition triggers on the ladders and then getting out of retreat mode by getting his encounter, which I think happens, yeah, like at a very good time, honestly. And now he just has to uh, trigger a screen transition over on the other side so that he can get his vision back and climb up. That blind is climb is actually pretty cool too because you can use. Uh... Well, there, I'm sure there are other ways, but you can use like a ni like nice sound cues with using the music. Makes it pretty consistent to get over into the right spot. Because if you miss the ladder, it can be a little bit finicky. But oh yeah, if you get lost up there, then it's full on panic mode. Yeah. 
If you have significantly large stones, you can even try to do that other climb blind, where you're dodging the fireballs and stuff. I have uh, attempted it once and managed to save five seconds with it. <laughs> <laughs> Worth. <laughs> Worth. Never again, though. It's very difficult. Like, the amount of setups that I had to do just barely made it even save time. Yeah. And that is especially a place where if you get lost up there, you are screwed. There is nowhere you can go. You're on a ladder. You cannot pause. You cannot save yeah, out and save back in. You're, just you're gone. Can't even retreat. Some more slow encounters for Bowie, unfortunately. Yeah. I hate seeing those wyverns. Yeah. He's pretty much through, though. So I'm sure Bowie will be relieved to get out of Jupiter Lighthouse. <laughs> I can't imagine. I always am. Oh, he just has to go and lose to the final fights. After getting the unfortunate heal from Alex. Yeah, Alex with the crappy heal, yeah, once again. Plexa up to some shenanigans, doing some retreat glitches. We have Lava Jesus Felix over here. This is just a small taste, there will be an even longer one later. Hey, there's the instant proc. There's condemn. the condemn. <laughs> That's beautiful. Just had to prove that he can do it. Yep. And uh, that is how we skip the majority of this floor. Then uh, the second floor we're gonna skip even even easier. Just have to burst glitch in this pillar, and then ta da! Another floor of magma rock done. These like weird silver tiles too. You want to walk over those when you can, if without losing a bunch of time. There's no encounter rate on those tiles. A reminder: We'll be finding out how um, how we're doing on times here as soon as Bowie's out of Jupiter Lighthouse. But a an estimate would be like 13, 14 minute lead for Team Isaac at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to Chaos Chimera completely inverting that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's done until the final boss of Dark Dawn, folks. It is particularly brutal. Ooh, nice. Plexa catching the early cycle. Had his position just right on that burst so that he could make it to this platform. Yeah, that's scary too, because I think if you go, if you're too low, don't you get like a really long cutscene or something? Yep. Yeah. I actually thought it was a soft lock at first, but apparently it clears itself out after a little while. But yeah, that's, uh, if you use the burst in the wrong position, then it just kind of doesn't know where and when to continue gameplay. We making his way up to the fight. Let's see if perhaps Bowie can win. Avenge Plexa. I don't think you want him to actually try to win. It's gonna be a very long fight. <laughs> it's gonna be bad for your team, buddy. <laughs> Very nice Jupiter orb. You can actually get trolled in this fight and have, um, like, Karstel use, like, she's got Jin Dance or something. Fest Festival something Jin or fest, other. Yeah, yeah Jin Fest. 
It does no damage, it just puts all of your genes on standby up on target. Uh, yeah. Agashio has also got an ability I'm pretty sure that either does no damage or basically nothing. Yeah, cage. It prevents your action and it does one damage. <laughs> I, uh, I remember there it is. Runs. Yep. Oh, okay. Eight damage. Never mind. I, was, I, like, was... I had all four party members still alive when they were all in the fight. Oh my god, that's bad yeah. luck. Right, now not perfect luck in those first ones, but uh, cars bring it back with a supernova. Lex are having a bit of a rough go fleeing there, but nothing too serious. Every like three, four people have revive at this point. Everybody's got AoE heals. Like oh yeah, yeah. Eight strong. party members with yeah. of which three would have revive. You're good. Yeah, if you part, if you full party wipe in Magma Rock, you've probably done something wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. Knock on wood, of course. I think you'd need a party of particularly aggressive uh, birds while also making the mistake of stopping to attempt to flee at some point. Because that, after a while, the, your, like, your odds increase with every flee, so after a while it's just pretty much guaranteed. But if you bail out to try to do something else in between, then that's, that, that incremental increase in flee chance resets. to commit. And Bowie's making his way out. By Jupiter Lighthouse. Felix taking a lovely slow stroll to the elevator. Yeah, I don't blame him. He gotta, gotta get a little bit of fresh air after being in here. It's pretty stuffy in Magma Rock. It's crazy. And yeah, Blex are just uh, resetting what is the first room of the dungeon, so this gives them access to a whole bunch of new retreat glitches. Uh, most important one of which being this one. Not bad. <laughs> he is going to make sure to grab the Magma Ball before he heads out, but other than that, Plexa is done with Magma Rock. Oh, now I know why Bowie is having such a rough time. Apparently, Plexa named his Garrett Bowie. Yeah. Well, that is uh, so rude. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I thought we had good sportsmanship here. I'm so ready for Bowie's Garrett to be called Plexa. Also, yeah, we grabbed the Magma Ball. Um, we kind of entered that room from the wrong side, and... Uh, even though the Magma Ball isn't spawned, its hitbox is actually always there, so we can just jump all over to it and grab it. Now, despite the ship being able to fly, um, a single tree on the ground is enough to block it, so you actually do have to be pretty precise flying around through those, the, the woods and stuff. Yeah, we don't want to be demolishing trees here. We care about nature in this stream. Yeah. That's why you'll see, like, the runners will be taken, like, seemingly random, like, odd roundabout ways on the boat, but that that's why. You can't just fly over for us. Yeah, exactly. It's more of a hover boat. <laughs> Thank you, Hark.
Exactly, if we're gonna disrespect trees, then Tret will turn us into trees. Ooh, nice encounter for Bowie there. Yeah, I should easily clear the first first squad here. Get some nice damage in. I did eventually get the run. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be an easy... They'll, they'll be dead before he knows it. Yep, Bowie's A-OK. -okay. And away he goes. In the meantime, Plexa is on his way to go get another Jupiter Jin, and this one is very important. This one's called Low. Feel free to spam your emotes in chat. Um, and its ability is that it can end the turn prematurely. So if you manage to get it set up where uh, you, your uh, party gets all of its actions, and then your slowest party member uses Low before your opponent gets to do anything, then they don't get to do anything at all. It's a pretty Difficult gin to use correctly, so a lot of casual players don't really know what to do with it. I sure as hell didn't. Um, but when used properly, it is very powerful. You can straight up deny all of the opponent's actions. Yeah. Not bad. Looks like making his way up to my hometown. The hometown of Prox. Yep. I do live in Canada, guys. Yeah. Frozen hostile wasteland up here. Is the world also crumbling away at your hometown? Yep. Oh boy. <laughs> that is lovely. And yeah, even though um, Plexa is above water and could technically just sail, um, actually flying over it is both faster and it doesn't give you any encounters, so he does also always want to be flying, even when he's just above water. Nice slow encounter there. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I I didn't see Bowie's last encounter, but I assume he's probably cycled through to his second party now. I think so. I think I just saw Felix looking down. Oh yeah, he is he is looking like look at that boy. Uh, where is he? At the very least, there should be one more encounter before that anyway. Yeah, he's still in his first party. Oh, there you go. A Phoenix with a supernova. That'll do the trick. Except, oh my, they are just refusing <laughs> <Jeez>. to die. <laughs> Ooh. 1 HP and 3 HP, so rude. Flex on his way to get a final few gin right here. What's this boy called again? Uh, this good boy. It's Mold. Yeah. And then on his way to the next gym, Plex is gonna pass the store where all of the items that we dropped in Trial Road that we duplicated uh, are now waiting for him so he can give them to, Katsa, uh, to uh, Isaac. But not before selling all of Garrett's gear for extra money. So yeah, we're going to be uh, decking out both Felix and Isaac with uh, Soul Blades, War Gloves, and uh, Knight's Crown just to... Or Thorn Crown, sorry, just to make sure that uh, their attack stats are as high as it possibly can be. We're going to be putting both of them in the Jupiter classes for Mars Lighthouse, just so that um, we have access to two sets of Shuriken at Soul Blade level strength. But oh, we did get his party wipe too, so he's just making his way over to the um, the out of bounds. Very good. You do love to see it. 
One last Jin pickup for Plexa here. Now this one can be one of three Jin from the Golden Sun one. In this case, it is Hail. Always makes the menus very funny because you, I, I always have every Jin named by their actual name. But since this can be one of three names, I just call it Merc Jin. It does merge right into the run. Yep. Oh dear. But we possibly haven't. Oh! Uh. He's having a bit of trouble finding the ladder. Okay, he's got an encounter. That's good. That's good at least. I think he's found it. Yeah, he could. We saw the little screen wiggles of the ladder. So I just get yeah, it. Yeah. There are some particularly large tra uh, tracks of land right there that you can actually get lost in for sure. Yeah, that's a long horizontal section where if you there's we're, we're looking for like one tile basically that has a ladder and everything else is meaningless and. There is a decent amount of places, like little, like um, L-shaped, co like corners that you can get stuck in, and it's, sometimes it can be hard to figure out like which one you're at. Lexa has officially entered the Mars Lighthouse, baptizing his new Soul Blade with an instant Megiddo on that poor little buck. Doesn't know what's happened to it. There are some creatures here still that require some extra uh, attacks just because they're a little bit more tanky. These Minotaur are one of them. Just gonna drop an extra prism on it to finish it off. The double shuriken is not quite good enough. And then in the latter half of the dungeon we also have the Akamana. We do not want to see Akamana. They they are slow. Nice! Gotta a, got a close those this stuff drop. Doesn't really do much, but you love to see it regardless. Oh yeah, that's kind of going to just be the setup for uh, from here on out. We have uh, Ivan as uh, one of our big casters in uh, in the Hermit class series, where he's going to have access to stuff like Shine Plasma and Hill Prism. And uh, then we have um, two ninjas in Isaac and Felix, completely geared up with Soul Blades and attack stat boost and items. And then uh, we have Shiba on the side, because she is still a more powerful caster than the Merchant, even at her low level, so... She can be nice to just finish off the Akamana if we do encounter them. Just throw a little tornado in there, she's in her base class. Alexa inching ever closer towards this flame. Very nice. Got the dumb skip. Oh yeah. That's my legacy. Really right close there. to the to the uh, the flame, and if you open your menu, it deloads the flame. And then you have, uh, depending on your position, a uh, certain amount of frames that you could possibly get through there, um, depending on when you open your menu. And uh, it's all about recognizing the flames. And uh, yeah, hoping that you get a good I was one. Running into a wall there momentarily. Surely it was for the memes. <laughs> and that dumb skip, we're gonna have to do a second time. And then there's another dumb skip later in the Jupiter house. And yeah, since it's I've been taking good. to calling it stupider skip. Oh, that's <laughs> fair. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. I 
I I have come I've come to peace with people calling my skips dumb. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not happy about it either. They just don't work sometimes. Bowie unfortunately not getting the fast cycle, but getting some extra hops in for the fans. Couple hops, perhaps a few spins. Spins are actually not a good idea. <laughs> no, you can very much get a counter or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably best to stay away from the spin, folks. Oh yeah. Some uh, little bit scary looking pounds over on Plexus side, but I assure you everything is 100% safe. You are never at any risk of getting hit by the giant fireball. We don't like that bird in particular, we're gonna give it a Megiddo. You don't necessarily want to see too many of those birds because they give a ton of experience, which means that all of your party members are gonna level up, which means that there's more text to clear. Say hi to that little Merc region right there. Don't actually need him. That one's a fighter, so we, we don't really want to bother fighting him. And there is Teleports. Now in the outside world, Teleport's really cool. You can just teleport to all of the... Uh, all of the towns that you have been to, and within dungeons a little bit more restricted, you need those teleport paths, but we do need it to progress through the dungeon. Like any amount of Megiddo's I'm seeing on Plexus said. It is still a cool animation, even after having the Soul Blade for this long. Ooh, nice, getting a new little optimization. Just getting hit fire. Are we just getting absolutely disrespected by those roll, uh, those raging rocks? Yeah, Magma Rock is not being friendly to him right now. No, just like not failed casting synergy for like three turns in a row. Bowie's just sitting there like, can I go? <laughs> exactly. I think Magma Rock is upset that he's walking on top of lava. It's not having it. ELA's uh, built-in heart rate monitor here on Plex's side. <laughs> Ooh, whenever you get a missed pound in yeah. this particular section, that is uh, that is definitely bad for your heart rate. Yeah. yeah. Making it just fine. Plenty of time. No problem. Exactly. Now a very funny hallway, where there is for some reason no encounters whatsoever. I'd love to see it. Yeah, Bowie's just doing his last little trip out. Reset his entrance point, and he's good to go. Get some fresh air as well. Yeah. Only by one whiff's worth, but you know. <gasps> okay, guys, I'm ready. And a nice little retreat glitch into the center of Magma Rock. Love to see it. It's 
So to correct myself, uh, the fourth party member is Mia, not not Shiva. My bad. I was thinking of old strats. Stuck in the past. Oh, the lesser demon ruining Bowie's day. Bowie, I would imagine at this point, is just like, get me out of here. Oh yeah. Some rough encounters in here. Like I is setting up for the flame dragons, who... If everything goes well, we are just going to absolutely trounce over in three turns. At this point, we have so many Jinto at our disposal that it is actually crazy. We, we can just spam Eclipses left and right, we can use Petra and Ground in order to make sure none of them get any damage whatsoever. Uh, no, no chance to attack. Yeah, Plexa didn't heal up before this fight for a reason. <laughs> There's no point. They, they don't do anything. Oh yeah. Poor dragons. Yeah, just, just boost that Jupiter firepower with Thor. And get some Eclipses in there. Switch some party members out, which is now possible ever since we got our second party. We, every turn we can switch out one party member, and that way we can just bring in some Jin that we have set up to be used as summon fuel, and uh, get right in there. Yep, yeah, just lull comes out, and good good fight guys, good, good stuff, thanks for coming out. And that's it. Five flame dragons. No, it's funny how one of them is like kind of smaller than the other one. I wonder where these flame dragons came from. Oh, whoa. Oh, look at that. Huh. Look at that. It's the pouty pink lady <laughs> and her bustly <laughs> friend. Well, that is pretty much his personality. Having yeah. muscles. Yeah. Okay, this must be part of Plex's secret spice sack because he's he seems to be doing a menu uh, right now as opposed to after entering Mars Lighthouse again after retreating out. Yeah. Can't imagine the strats are going to be too much different, but he did say he has some secret reroutes. Who knows? Maybe it's in Mars, Mars 2. If not, then we're just going to be fighting a whole bunch of stuff in ninja classes again, but... Right, and Bowie's well on his way. Just grab the uh, lull and away he goes. Visiting Canada along with Plexa. Wow. Do you have a lighthouse near you as well? Yeah, I actually yeah. do. Yeah. Is it also this hot? No. <laughs> okay, that's, that's fortunate. Yeah. Much less infested with evil creatures as well. Oh, that, that that's very fortunate. I'd hate to be the lighthouse keeper in that case. <laughs> there we go. There it a is. Bit of menuing flub on Plexus end. But got I think sure it must that. be just one of these new things. I, 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 he he did swap out uh, Sheba and Isaac as well, so yeah, must just be like a little bit of newness. Swap them out in that little rather than in the menu. <laughs> oh, are we just getting just constantly trolled here? Uh, once again, having, yeah. yeah, like, what is this, fourth fail? Third oh, or fourth? Lord. Yeah, all right, well, away he goes. I think the game is kind of done with Bowie. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I think the feeling's mutual. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Minus Warriors aren't too bad. Um, 
you do need an extra uh, an extra prism, I believe. Yeah, and uh, after a while you get a high enough level where you can, like, just two shurikens are enough. But oh, you're actually it, happy in here, um... Sorry if I zoned out and you already said it, but uh, if you get if you get phoenixes like the the fiery birds in here, you're pretty happy. On one hand, yes. On the other hand, it's like okay, that is still a lot of text boxes to go to, and I don't necessarily yeah. need the levels. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Double edged sword. I always like to see it just for the. It, it makes me feel a little bit better about getting fleas, but it's probably not that impactful. Yeah. Just for just for reference, like uh, if it, taking out an encounter with like two phoenixes, what like thirteen thousand XP or something insane like that? Oh yeah, the the yeah. bird line of monsters is absolutely crazy. They're a casual player's best friends for grinding yeah. levels. The best ones being the wonder birds in uh, Treasure Isle. Are we grabbing his last gin, other than the ones he's going to be given? Well, I suppose you grab the gin in Felix's parents' house, but... Yeah. Pretty much the last one. A little shopping trip. Yeah, Garrett's yard sale. <laughs> Garage sale, depending on where you're from. I don't have either of those. No? <laughs> no. Sad. Oh, they're great. I got a copy of Majora's Mask for like five dollars. Ooh. Yeah. That's a nice haul. Not a bad find. And I wonder what Bowie's gonna get. Do we know what 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 did, what did Plexa get for the uh, Mercury Gen? Uh, Plexa got Hail. Hail, okay. It really doesn't matter, but... No. It's just a little bit of excitement. What you gonna get, you know? What's in the box? And he gets... He's probably gonna... Yeah, he, he cleared it too fast to see, but... Oh, it's see, also it, Hill. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Thanks, Hale. Mm -hmm. Like some making his way through <laughs> through Akamana Alley. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the encounter uh, rate in this room in the Mars Wing is so rooms. high. I, I hate these pipe puzzle rooms. The one yeah. in, in both wings. The Mercury one's much less of a pain in the bottom. <laughs> but in the bouteille. Nice little reset there to reset the encounter steps, get as little encounters as possible. First wing cleared for Plexa. Yeah, firebirds, that's what they're called, yeah. Yeah, the phoenix uh, are our magma rock, they're firebirds in Mars That's, Light that's not great, he looks going down, but... Yeah. He should get out. Oh, does he get out in front of them? I don't think he does. Ooh, ooh, yeah, this is... <laughs> this is a little spooky, actually. He's debating... Okay, okay, okay. He's <laughs> menu flooding. <laughs> a little bit of sweat, nothing too bad. Yeah. We still have access to revive. It's yeah, just yeah some you, time. And you still have your backup party. It's just annoying if your backup party gets swapped in because then you got to change it all back. Oh yeah, they have to do so much manuing. Oh. All right, Bowie is nice and set up in the double ninja uh, setup as well. Making quick work of some doodle bugs. I like the doodle bugs. They're kind They're of a fast, cool yeah. yeah. Fast encounter and nice sprites. Yeah. Kind of cute. Yeah. Kind of dead. 
the old grind and retreat. Um, PG-13, of course. I'm gonna use cast grind and, and, and just retreat right on out. Yep. I love Mar Mars Lighthouse. I I definitely like it more than Jupiter Lighthouse, but I don't think that's a very hot take. No, it's not. <laughs> Mars Lighthouse is a really good final dungeon. Yeah. And it's just enough skips to keep it interesting as well, even though one of them is dumb. Speaking of... Oh! Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> quick counter. Nice quick double attack, though. Flex is just making him his way through the Jupiter wing maze. Also gonna have a dumb skip for him in a little bit. Yep. Oh, nice, but we are flying the new little time saver to just get hit by the fire into the little nook there as well. I don't know, wait nice. For it. He's through. There's one. Dumb skip one. Now the dumb skip the Plex has that is particularly interesting because this one moves. Yeah, yeah, that was fine. Yeah. And actually I feel like it makes it a little bit easier. I, I you know it's funny, I find that one harder. Really? Yeah. But the previous method of dumb skip where you could do save and quit, um, that one is absolutely free because you could just uh, run into the fire, stand in there with your save menu up and then Wait, uh, by the time you load back in, you're already halfway <laughs> through. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I've not but seen of course, it. yeah, sa saving is slower, so it's not even used in any category anymore. But yeah, you, as long as you keep your save menu up, Felix is just standing there getting his butt burned by the fire. Alexa making his way to his final wing. You may think, final? Well, what do you mean? There's two more. Eh, we'll see soon. Making his way to his final two wings. Yeah. Currently walking through two wings at once. Big multitasker here, Alexa. Nice pound screen for Bowie. Bowie's not getting too bad of encounters now. Indeed, but the most important part is when I come on, it's coming to play, so we'll have to yeah. see. Also, if you forget to push that statue that Bowie just used to move on, it that is that is not good. I have never done that in my life, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not every single one. Yes, same, yeah, yeah, yeah same. I, I'm just speaking, I must have seen someone else do it, probably. Probably. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At least I always notice in time and just, like, <laughs> go back up and move it. But, yeah, if you actually go through the entire puzzle, then you're a little bit further away from home. <laughs> Oof. Nice getting a Megiddo, clearing it right away. Bowie heading up for his second serving of dumb skip. Really nice. like this little time saver, by the way. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you, Reg. Nice. Easy, great through. The dumb skips have been good today. Like's actually Ooh. taking the Akamanas. Trying to frost the fire and it doesn't work. That is another thing of Golden Sun speedrunning. Keeping track of what you have what keyed on which which button. <laughs> yeah. 
We have quite a few nice uh, Golden Sun speedrunning memes, and that's that's um, definitely one of them. Alright. So there we go, lighting the Mercury Wing. I'm gonna do one last little magic trick with the Retreat Glitch, because we have apparently not exhausted all of our possibilities yet. Because if we use the Retreat Glitch and do the fire again, then it will suddenly light the Venus fire instead. And always the Venus fire and only the Venus fire, but at least we can skip one of the weights. Yep, two for one right there. Not bad. Thank you, Baal. So we have a blue fish and a yellow fish. A sea fish and a land fish. <laughs> Is land fish just chicken or? It can be whatever you want it to be. <laughs> That's a good answer. If That's evolution is to be believed, we are the landfish. <laughs> yeah, we can be land. <laughs> we can be land. <laughs> yeah. Want, right? Alexa moving into the big old chonky Doom Dragon menu. Yeah, nice, nice, nice big little menu here, making sure all of the correct gin are on the correct people. Getting a whole bunch of them stand by so that we can always bring another person in from the back party to into the front party to get another summon ready. And if we were to talk about every single gin switch in here, uh, there would not be enough time. Big menu. But the basic gist of it is that we are setting up for the final fights. And where Golden Sun 1 has Scored House strats, Golden Sun 2 has Dark Side of the Moon strats. Because rather than spamming Judgments, we are going to be spamming Eclipses. And One bit thing to note as well, the uh, Trainer's Whip that we picked up way long time ago and Yampy is finally coming to use on Mia here for uh, what Sid was explaining earlier about um, the last, the slowest person in your party being able to use lull and just ending the enemy's turn. That's going to be Mia. Yep. And that is literally all we use that class for. We do not actually use it for any of its actual class abilities. We just want the agility stat of the class that the trainers with gifts. <laughs> and that agility stat on Jenna or on Mia is uh, the exact right amount to have her be the correct Agility. Nothing like wanting an item to make your character worse. Basically. <laughs> and then uh, this fight is going to be a whole lot of smart Jin usage. And uh, as we're gearing up for Doom Dragon, Black or, uh, Bowie is making his way through the Flame Dragons. Once again, the Flame Dragons do not get to do a single thing. I missed the first turn, but he has quite a bit of damage on. It might be from before the fight. Oh, he's swapping up now, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think he's fine. Yeah, he's doing good. He's on the second turn right now, just spamming some eclipses. Can oh, yeah. Okay. Good. There we go. Normal things here, the Flame Dragon's fight. And then here goes Doom Dragon. Now, aside oh, from no, spamming... Ooh. Yeah, sorry. He did have a sketchy turn one. Oops. Yeah, he should be mm. fine though. Yeah, you can save that. Hmm. See. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay, we're good. Okay. Good. All right. Flame Dragon's done. Back to Doom Dragon. So uh, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be cycling through Petra, Ground, and Lull to essentially make sure that we always cancel out the first turn of the Doom Dragon. Uh, the, Doom, the Doom Dragon's turns and attacks are basically set into patterns. And all of his most dangerous attacks are on the first turn. So we're going to make sure that uh, at any given turn, we either prevent that first turn with Petra or Ground, or we make sure it doesn't ever go off at all by using Lull. Um, there is one exception to that where uh, 
Guard Aura would go before LOL as one of the most dangerous attacks, but fortunately on the turns that we use LOL, we also kind of use them just to, as a healing up turn. So should a Guard Aura go through, it's fine. It's not a damage turn, it's a healing turn. So not a problem. And other than that, it's just cycling out the right people with the right gin, using the right gin at the right times in order to make sure you have your eclipses av available at all times. A little bit of uh, courthouse strats in there as well. We use some judgment sometimes to finish some of the phases. Uh, the first phase is going to be the longest because there's a whole bunch of setting up. We have to power everybody up with uh, with elemental power to make sure that the summons do more damage. We have to set up the speeds, like at first using Mud to make the Doom Dragon slower and then eventually switching to Zephyr to make us faster than the Doom Dragon so uh, that we always outspeed him whenever it matters. And um, yeah, that is basically going to be it. We're also always going to make sure that we have a defensive gen up, be it Flash, be it Granite, or be it Shade. Just uh, that's the, because we can only prevent one of the attacks and Doom Dragon has uh, three in the first phase and uh, two in later phases. Uh, so we have to make sure that we also don't die from the damage that that takes. Because he does still have some pretty damaging abilities, especially in phase 2 and 3, where he starts to use Cruel Ruin a lot more. So, that is basically it. Cycling through your defensive Jin to make sure you always have something up. Cycling through Petroground and Lol to make sure he never gets his first turn off, because that's where the Jin Storms are, which you can just put all of your Jin on cooldown. Uh, that is where the uh, Dark... The dark blessings are, or, which can cause haunts, and that is where uh, the guard auras are, which can prevent you from uh, being able to damage him because he has his own defensive stat up, which is about as powerful as Flash, I believe, and uh, a whole bunch more of scary abilities that are all on turn one. It is nice to have Ivan. Uh, too, by the way, every once in a while. I mean, he has flex turns a lot. You can always heal if you're real scared. Exactly. Ivan is always there to just throw in an extra wish or an extra wish well if you yeah. need it. He's For got the most plenty part, of PP. Oh, yeah. For the most part, the healing is done by the uh, Jin Spritz, though, which acts as a single wish. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's, that's that makes it pretty easy to make it through the fight most of the time without having to worry about throwing a, an extra heal in. But it is nice. He is like a little little safe goat, especially if he gets particularly antsy with his uh, with his cruel ruins. Yeah, yeah, that cruel ruin is to be respected. Yeah, this fight has three faces, one for each head. And while he uh, gets less HP on the later phases, um, making the turn, sh uh, making them a bit shorter, and also just having higher damage output, and he does always also gets a lot more aggressive. <laughs> so nice effort there to keep his agility stat up, make sure that it's always. Uh, always higher than the other two turns of the Doom Dragon. Don't have to be faster than the first turn since we prevent it from happening anyway. But usually you're faster than that as well. There we go, get the Petra in, prevent it. Bowie about to make his way through Akamana Alley. Hopefully not getting too bad of a guy. in the dungeon. Oh yeah. Big agree. Oh, yeah, there's a cruel run. Uh, oh, oh, I was about to say, luckily, well, it's a flash turn, but no, it is not. There is phase two of the Doom Dragon. So yeah, the first phase is seven turns just because of all of the setup and boosting your elemental power. And phase two, uh, since we have a lot of Jin prepared on the back party, so that we can just basically spam summons, is only four turns. And since we have to do a little bit more setup in uh, phase three, there that one is five turns. 
I think it should be four. I think I think this might be a new setup. Really? Yeah. Goes to show you, I've been away for too long again. I'm back. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long run. Oh, it's yeah. a very long run. Thank you so well, much for... It's uh, a very long run. It is a long run. But yeah, thanks so much for actually staying here for the full TLA run for commentary. Because I know you weren't like feeling 100%, so... Yeah, I was pretty bummed with that uh, TBS um, run, but it's fine. It's honestly like... There was a... I mean, the first death to Soteros, that was my bad. The rest of them, that wasn't, so... What can you do, right? Mm -hmm. It's been very good to have you along for the ride, regardless. Just thank watching you, thank some TLA. Yeah, it's been fun, so... Flex is moving right along in phase three. Mm -hmm. Two more turns to go. One of them being a low turn, just to get a little bit healed up again. And, uh, just do some setup. Now, if I'm unless I'm wrong, this is the last turn. This is uh, oh. if it's actually four. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, it's a heal turn. Oh. Yep, five turns. I guess I need to update my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. And then uh, we're actually going to bring in a dragon of our own for this final turn. Just, uh, well, multiple dragons actually. First we have Eclipse, and then we're going to bring it up with a classic Tiamat. My dragon beats your dragon. Pretty fitting end. That's Doom Dragon. A very scary fight casually, but a very consistent fight. Yeah. Assuming you do your meta, your, your, your yeah, GG uh, menu correctly. Yeah, GG Plexa. That was a very consistent showing on his end. I think that's better than he's been playing at all recently. Oh, absolutely. The the, the bad students cramming before the no last shit. day is uh, <laughs> is absolutely. It, it worked. He crammed all of that stuff in there. <laughs> Good stuff. But we're getting started on his second wing of Mars Lighthouse. And uh, much like with Golden Sun 1, there is still a lot of epilogue with a lot of text and whatnot that we have to go through first before we uh, do so. And then uh, at the end of that text, there's going to be a, a fist bump where, uh, where even Kraden joins in the fist bump. And then as soon as that fist bump happens, that is when uh, the Golden Sun Dark Dawn section of the run begins for that team. And Rafi is going to take it from there. Canonically, as well, the reason Dark Dawn took so long to come out is because Craden threw his arm out when he uh, did that fist bump, so it took so long to recover. It's, it's make true. His appearance in the game. It's true, it's canon. Yep. Bowie now making his way through the Jupiter wing uh, slog that is using Cyclone repeatedly. Yeah, not actually, not exactly a fast synergy. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, I, I don't think Ju Jupiter Wing is probably my least favorite. Mine's Mars, because fair of Rocket Mountain Alley. <laughs> yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> kind of wish that it, uh, the retreat glitch ended up skipping the Mars Wing instead of the Venus Wing, because the yeah, Venus yeah, Wing yeah. is nice and short anyway. Yeah. It's about the same length as the Mercury Wing. Yeah, for those who uh, have maybe never watched a Dark Dawn speedrun before, you are in for a treat. That Ooh. the game has come a very, very, very long way. Couldn't have a better uh, comms team as well for this next up coming around. Absolutely.
Are we making his way up to stupidest skip? Or, or sorry, stupider skip? Hey, oh, hey, how fitting that it's in Jupiter. Stupider, Jupiter, yeah. Stupider, Jupiter. Oh. Little close, yeah. Yeah, unfortunate. Well, it's hard to close the menu and open it again really quickly. Sometimes, like he's he's got it. He's like at an unlock now, but yeah, perfect. Second try. Yeah. Fortunately, with this dump skip, if you fail it, you just have to climb back up a ladder. With the other one, you have to run through, and you gotta, like run around, get some encounters again, and run past all the fire again. It's less punishing at the very least. Oh, Blaze being weird there for Bowie. Just Blaze things. Yep. It happens. has one more wing to go. Two more wings in one wing. It's like getting a uh, a, a double dice block in, in Mario Party. You get two turns in one turn and we get two wings in one wing. Nice Megiddo coming out. He's busy. 